Cats football. 101.7 KSAM Huntsville. Eat em up, Cats. Here we go, here we go. The only thing matters is the win. That's it. Whatever it takes. Let's go, man. Let's win on three. One, two, three. Man. The following is a 101.7 KSAM Sports presentation. This is Sam Houston State University Bearcats football. From the flagship station of your national champion Bearcats, here's Rob Hip and Brian Adams. A pleasant good afternoon, friends, and welcome to another edition of Sam Houston Bearcat football. As we are excited about this one from Van Wagner and the Bearcat Sports Radio Network, I'm Rob Pipp alongside Brian Adams, live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Sam Houston looking to continue their dominant winning ways. But, Brian, this may be the toughest contest of the season facing a Jacksonville State Gamecock team that is coming off of a victory just a couple of weeks ago. Like us, they took care of business versus Stephen F. Austin, but this team also defeated a FBS opponent at Florida State. So this team is capable tonight or this afternoon, going to be a tough contest, and I think this is going to be the real first test of the season for Sam Houston. Oh, I agree. I think it's going to be a big uh, football game today. It's obviously, it's homecoming for Sam Houston and a great afternoon for some college football, but you're right. You know, Jacksonville State's a great school. they got some really talented athletes, and they can win on any given Saturday. So Sam Houston certainly can't take this team lightly. But you know what, Rob? Sam Houston's been on a roll. They have stayed on a roll. And, uh, man, they are so tough. They have weapons at every position. They have the best defense, in my opinion, in all of FCS football. And, man, it's going to be a heck of a contest here this afternoon. We'll step aside. We'll take a brief break. And when we come back, we'll look back to last week's contest. We'll talk more about this one. And then after that, we'll have our coaches' pregame show with Coach Keeler. But we'll be back in just a few moments. Make sure to stay with us from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors. 101.7 KSAM, HBI Office Solutions, Hartfield Floors, HEB, Huntsville Toyota, Jimmy John's, and Ward Furniture. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Hometown proud, Bearcat strong. Back to the game on 101.7 KSAM. Free game continues, friends. Rob Hip, Brian Adams, live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth in beautiful Huntsville, Texas, under cloudy skies today. And, Brian, there may be a little bit of rain in the forecast for this one. I know a little bit earlier we were talking about this weather. What do you got for us? You're the new Doppler guy up here. Oh, man, I love it, man. I got my radar going on. Yeah, it's 84 <laughs> degrees currently. It's uh. It's about a 35% chance of rain, and we got the wind blowing out of the south at about 10 miles an hour, Rob. So, yeah, we're going to face uh, some uh, rain chances, but I think as the game progresses, the rain chances will will go away, and we're going to have some good uh, football today. It is getting more and more cloudy out here. We'll see how this one goes. The Cats, as I mentioned earlier, coming off their second bye week of the season most recently, just two weeks ago, rolling past Lamar right here at Bowers, 41-17. to That was all the way back on October the 9th. It felt like forever ago. It was the program's 150th all-time win at Bower Stadium. Well, today it is the 200th game in the history of this stadium. The game today versus Jacksonville State, as I just said, the 200th game at Bower Stadium. This was a facility, Brian, that was open in 1986. You were here I, when it opened. I was here. Tell us a little bit about what you've seen over the years with this facility and just some of the exciting things in Bearcat history, man. Well, you know, it's this is such an exciting uh, historic program. I mean, my brother played here in the early 80s, and he played tight end over there at uh, Pritchett Field, but it's better known as Bedrock. And when I graduated from Huntsville High School, my first year at Sam Houston was here at Bowers. And so what a different uh, facility altogether. Over the years, you know, here we are in 2021, 
I mean, we got this beautiful scoreboard, beautiful facility, and things have just progressed uh, immensely. And one thing about Bowers, it is one of the toughest places to play college football if you are a visiting team. You go back to that 1986, the opening, the Bearcats won their first 13 games here at Bowers from 1986 to 1988. Currently, 150 wins, 48 losses, and one tie. That is just unbelievable to think about this place and how tough it is to play at this stadium. Oh, it's incredibly tough. Opponents come in here and uh, and all of a sudden, you know, they're already kind of a backs against the wall. I mean, because the record here is just staggering with the coaches they've had come through the program with my coach, Ron Randleman. I mean, just a great coach. And you go on to up to Casey Keeler now and his incredible record, his incredible playoff record here at home is just mind boggling. And yes, it is very tough for opponents to come in here in Bowers and play football. It's the first time since 2001 that these two teams have met. The programs were Southland Conference rivals from 1997 to 2002. Talking about Jacksonville State University, the Cats and Gamecocks are facing off for the first time since the semifinals of the 2015 FCF playoffs. When the number one ranked Gamecocks eliminated the Cats 62 to 10, just one year after Sam Houston had eliminated JSU in the second round of the 2014 playoffs. So it's the first time that the Bearcats have hosted Jacksonville State since 2001, but the last time they met was in 2015. Sam Houston entering this contest today, one of six unbeaten teams remaining in the FCS, joined by Eastern Washington at 7-0, North Dakota State at 6-0, Harvard is 5-0, Princeton 5-0, and Dartmouth 5-0 as well. The Cats also entering today's game with a 16-game win streak to go back to 2019. That is the longest streak in Division I across FCS and FBS football action after Alabama's recent loss to Texas A&M. Currently, North Central Division Three holds the longest overall NCAA win streak at 17 games. And by the way, with Sam Houston looking for 17 in a row here in this one, they already have their longest win streak at 16. They're trying to keep building upon that. This has been the most wins in a row in program history. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely incredible. You talk about over both FBS and FCS, you know, programs across the country to have this streak going like Sam Houston has. It's absolutely incredible. The fans are coming out. It is electric. I mean, they won it all. Uh, the FES championship in the spring. I mean, the enthusiasm, the, the fans, I mean, everybody coming out, supporting these Bearcats. I mean, it is electric, Rob, and it is going to be a lot of fun here today. We quickly look back at two weeks ago from that 41-7 to victory over Lamar. Noah Smith had a career day, 119 yards in the back backfield and a touchdown on the ground that was career high in yards with his first career 100 yard game he also had a 49 yard touchdown run in the third quarter that was also his longest career rush Sam Houston also had interceptions from Cameron Alexander and Braden Clompton on the opening two drives of that game from the Cardinals the picks were the first in careers for both of those players so a lot of first time records a lot of first time things happening versus Lamar and it's crazy to think Brian about all the success that this team has had and there is still so many uh, accolades and awards and first time career accomplishments still happening for these guys <laughs> isn't that amazing you know one of the things that really stands out is Eric Schmidt and, and his leadership he is a, a junior quarterback out of the Woodlands High School and when he is playing you can see the confidence level in this team. It is unbelievable. They played against SFA at NRG, the Battle of the Piney Woods. Eric was out. But his replacement, Shoemaker, did an outstanding job leading that team to a win. The next week against Lamar, Eric Smith is back, and you could tell the difference. And that's what he brings. He brings that extra intangible to this team that makes him give them that confidence. He was a little bit sluggish coming back, though, at that Lamar game. Eric Schmidt made his return to the field after missing the Stephen F. And just what you were talking about, it was despite his lowest single game completion career percentage of his career, he was only 13 for 31 at 41%. Uh, we talked about just that sluggish play getting started because you're coming off of a game that you didn't even play, a very emotional one at that at the Battle of the Piney Woods. Did not get to play at that. Coach Keeler said he probably could have played, but they were wanting to keep him safe just to make sure with different things going on. We said, look, we don't want him to get out there and get banged up a little bit more and possibly be out for the, another game or two or maybe the season. Let's get him back to 100%. He still made plays, though, last two weeks ago when he needed to, throwing for a pair of touchdowns to Cody Crest and Chandler Harvin. He also rushed for a season-high 59 yards 
yards on eight carries. And by the way, Cody Crest, he is continuing to make a name for himself on this team as wide receiver. 34-yard touchdown in the second quarter. That was his fourth scoring grab of the season. That's already doubling his total for the entirety of the championship spring 2021 season. Man, that is absolutely just crazy. I mean, think about these weapons in the backfield. you got two running backs and Noah Smith, who you just talked about, who had a record uh, career last game. And you got Ramon Jefferson out of the Bronx, New York, just absolutely lighting it up. And, of course, Eric Schmidt in the shotgun. But then you got these wideouts, these nationally talented wideouts they have. And Cody Crest, like you said, he is just absolutely on a tear. Throw that ball anywhere near him, he is going to catch it. I mean, he is the perfect slot receiver. And then Ife Day, I mean, what can you say? We talk about him week in and week out. And, 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 and Quez Ezzard, let me tell you, man, he is probably – the most dangerous return man wide out in all of FCS football, and that's what Sam Houston brings to bear. That is exactly what we're looking for today, the dynamic of that Eric Schmidt to his wide receivers, the backfield, the defense, the Bearcats have it all. They're not letting it get to their heads. They continue to play each game as if they're going 1-0. For now, though, we'll step aside and take a break. I had a chance to catch up with head coach Casey Keeler. Pre-game with Coach Keeler coming up when we come back from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Rob Bibb here with head coach Casey Keeler on pregame. As we look back in this first segment, the Bearcats defeated Lamar 41-7 at home two weeks ago. Noah Smith finished with a career day, 119 rushing yards, had a touchdown. Also a career-long rush in that game of 49 yards. Markel Perry recorded five total tackles, three tackles for a loss before sitting out in the second half. Then Eric Schmidt made his return after missing the Battle of the Piney Woods. He had a pair of touchdown passes to Cody Crest and Chandler Harvin. Noah Smith, the coach, as I talked about earlier, had a career game. We've talked a little bit about this before, but how impressed have you been with his, just his continued development? Yeah, you know, Noah's a guy that we recruited uh, mainly as a slot receiver. And then we saw his versatility as a freshman and decided to play him as a running back that, you know, when you have him in the backfield, he can easily motion out and become a fifth wide receiver or a fourth wide receiver with a tight end. Uh, and so he gives you so much flexibility. And if you talk to Ryan Cardi, I think he would tell you that Noah Smith is like his, his crutch. He, he, he needs Noah Smith to, to kind of work in a game plan because you can use Noah so many different ways. Um, again, putting two backs out there uh, and, and you know, giving the defense a different look. Uh, putting one back out there that all of a sudden becomes no backs and you have an extra receiver who's a legitimate receiver. Uh, so he, his, his uh, skill set is unique. Uh, and, uh, you know, we kind of shelved Ramon Jefferson for the second half and, you know, Noah so, had a big day. Eric Schmidt came back, made his return. A little bit sluggish to start things, but he made plays when it counted. Just wanted to ask you, how tough is it to come back from an injury and return to the high level of play that you had before that injury? Yeah, you know, it was interesting. Um, we, we felt that that Eric could have played in the, in the Battle of the Piney Woods. We just felt with our medical staff it wasn't the best long-term solution in, in terms of he takes another hit, maybe we lose him for multiple games or possibly for the season. So I, th I think we did it for the right reasons. He felt fine physically. He just was telling us on the sidelines, he can just tell he's a little off. And so he had a great week of practice on the, on the off week, and he had a great week of practice right now. Uh, so that's given him two solid weeks. And I'd be disappointed if he doesn't play at a high level. But uh, you didn't see uh, the best version of, of Eric Schmidt out there against Lamar. Last question in this first segment. The defense continues to be a staple of this Bearcat team. We talk about him frequently, especially against the rush. Only 23 yards on the ground hosting Lamar, Cameron Alexander, Braden Clompton. They each had their first career interceptions. Just your thoughts on the continued success of this defense? Well, we, we ride our defense. You know, if you look how I sort of manage a game, I have no problem punting the ball and pinning people down deep and see if I can get a stop and get a, a quick return, especially since we have the best punt returner in the country back there that is either going to force guys to – put the ball out of bounds, or you're going to be forced to kick the ball to him. And uh, Jaquez is just absolutely amazing when he gets the, the ball in his hand in space. So uh, I, I, run a, I, I manage a game with the mindset I have the best defense in the country. And so sometimes I'm not nearly as aggressive offensively, uh, and that's because, again, I have a lot of faith in my punter and a lot of faith in our, de faith in our defense. After the emotional game at Stephen F. Austin, the Battle of Piney Woods, you face Lamar, you come out victorious. 
how tough is it for a team to kind of come off of that game? It was a great emotional win, but it's always tough to, to win any game, especially coming off of one like that. Yeah, you know, um, there was a lot of mental and physical energy uh, put into that uh, the Battle of the Piney Woods. And then when you look at the fact that Eric didn't play, and then, you know, Seth uh, Morgan, our All-American kicker, didn't play. And then as big a loss as any was the fact that Trace Mascara had to sit out the first half. Uh, and then you have, you know, we have a medical emergency with one of our coach's sons uh, on Thursday night. And again, very close team. I had to address the team Friday on the field. There wasn't a dry eye uh, on, on the field Friday before we hopped in the bus. So we had a lot of moving parts. And then the emotion of that game and the fact that we had, you know, talked about even though there's a lot going on in our world, these are games that great teams find a way to win. And, you know, at one point in that game, Rob, and thank God no one tapped me on the shoulder to tell me this, but we had a 3% chance of winning statistically that game late in the fourth quarter, uh, or actually early in the fourth quarter. And uh, our kids just, you know, made a play. I mean, Jaquez makes that, that play over top of uh, the Stephen, Stephen F. Uh, defender, uh, which, I say, which I've seen him do so many times. And all of a sudden it was like, just like, whew, we're going to be okay. And then we go down and score, we go for two, and then we pin them back and make them punt, and we get great field position again and score again. You know, um, it was a, uh, a physical football game because we're both very physical teams, uh, but also just an emotional game because so much is riding on that game. Bragging rights and the fact that we've just won 10 straight, historic uh, uh, number, no one's ever done that before in this battle. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was an emotional game, but, you know, it's football. You, you just got to strap it on and, and go play the next week. And I thought we played well enough to win, but I didn't think we played well enough to be called the number one team in the country. And that's what we want to be. We want to be the number one team in the country. we got to play better than we did against uh, Lamar last uh, two weeks ago. This wraps up the first segment. When we come back, we'll look ahead to today's AQ7 matchup as the Bearcats host the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. From Van Wagner, this is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. The Bearcat Pavilion at Bower Stadium is a new and exciting place to enjoy Bearcat football. Fans will find Smokin' Sammy's Barbecue, sodas, beer and wine, and a number of other food options from atop the southwest corner overlooking all of the action at Bower Stadium. The Bearcat Pavilion can be reserved on game days for pregame and or postgame private functions and may also be reserved for private events throughout the year. For more information about Bearcat Pavilion at Bower Stadium, call 936-294-2701. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. Double Dave's Pizza, Emblem Properties, Enterprise Holdings, Fast Signs, Faust Distributing, and First Financial Bank. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Welcome back to the pregame coaches show with head coach Casey Keeler as we look ahead to today's matchup versus Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks at home at Bowers as homecoming is also celebrated. The Gamecocks 3-3 three and three overall this season, 1-0 and oh in the WAC A Sun Challenge after defeating Stephen F. Austin 28-24 two weeks ago. Jacksonville State also coming off a of bye week after defeating SFA. What's the mindset heading into this one, Coach? Well, they're, they're a pretty good football team now. No one's played a tougher schedule in the country than, than Jacksonville State. Uh, Florida State, uh, UAB, who's a very good uh, Division One program. I think a Tennessee Martin team that people were a little surprised how well they're playing. Uh, and, and then um, they had the loss to Kennesaw, who you know has been historically a playoff team. And the loss of Kennesaw is a little deceiving because sometimes teams don't match up well in that triple option. And you have a short week to prepare for the triple option. Obviously, you know, Jacksonville didn't do a very good job doing that. So they're deceiving. You let them hang around, you're in trouble because they have a, a Clemson quarterback. They got two, AC, uh, two uh, SEC wide receivers, big physical offensive line. Strength of their team is their defense. Their back end's outstanding. I really like their guys up front. So, uh, again, we need to punch them in the mouth early. If we don't, this is going to be a long afternoon because this is a football team that can play with anyone in the country. You just talked about some of their players, a quarterback, Zary Cooper, broken career records for passing yards and touchdowns. How do you contain his play and some of the other positions to keep an eye on? Yeah, you know, he's one of those guys where when you blitz them, uh, all of a sudden, you open up some running lanes, and he can pull the ball down and make big plays there. So you, you got to make sure that well, however you're going to you know, find a way to get some hits on him and get him on the ground, you also got to make sure he's not breaking containment. Because so many of the big plays they make downfield are broken containment. His eyes are downfield, makes those plays. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we got to hit him early. we got to get a pass rush on. We can't let him sit back there. But at the same time, we can't play out of control. We play out of control, we're going to give up a, a number of big plays, either him pulling the ball down or him extending plays and making the, those throws downfield. 
practices this week? How have they been? I know you've had great practices uh, throughout the season so far. Kind of how have they continue to go and overall health of the team at this yeah, point? Yeah, I think we were smart, Rob. I think what we did was you know gave them off a little bit more time than we normally would on our get better week, and I think they really needed it. Uh, you know, I think you saw Monday we brought in uh, the IC truck. You know, as we're kicking field goals, um, the, the the music starts going and the lights are going, and the and the, the kids had a lot of fun with that. And that was just you know from the staff saying, hey, you know what, we appreciate what you've gone through this first half of the season. Awesome job. Let's attack the second half of the season. So um, yeah, it's been a great. You know, I think we needed the time down, uh, and and we've practiced really well. Uh, we just have to go out there and perform well, and especially early, because again, we let these guys hang around. It's, it's going to be a long afternoon. Coach, finally, you played so many games through the spring and continuing this season, now entering in the sixth game of this season. Just how do you keep up that level of energy, and what's it like for you from a coaching standpoint to be able to go through so many games in just a year? Well, again, I, I, I go back to the fact that this administration figured out that building two bye weeks into this season was going to be best for us long term. And I don't know how we would have survived, Rob, without those two weeks. I mean, playing the physical games we played four straight weekend, weekends and then three of the best teams in a country, three weekends in a row, um, you know, that, that's going to wear you out. And then, you know, coming back and, and, and starting the season right back up uh, after like a two or three month break. So, you know, I think there's been some unique challenges and uh, I think our kids have met those challenges and I think... Um, you know, they're, they're excited to, to attack this second half of the season. We're 5-0 and right now, number one team in the country, longest win streak in the country. Um, everything's riding on that next game. That next game happens to be Jacksonville State. Coach, as always, appreciate your time. Good luck today. Eat up, Cats. This wraps up the Bearcats pregame coaches show with head coach KC Keeler. More pregame when we come back from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. Sudden Link Cable, Wishnewski Dodge, Texas Farm Bureau, Texpress Urgent Care, Ticket Smarter, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Sam Houston Bearcats are national champions. Don't miss the excitement of Bearcat football. Season tickets and single game seats still available. Call the Bearcat ticket office at 936-294-1729 or go online at gobearcats.com forward slash tickets. Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest. Conveniently located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat Course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat Course in Huntsville. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities, including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. You might know that State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes has great service. She is your good neighbor after all. Did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates too? Yep, along with good neighbor service, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes has surprisingly great rates for everyone in Huntsville and Walker County. So call State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes at 936-295-2686 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Hi, this is Will Smith, and I'm proud of our family business, but I'm also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration, and we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville, your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. Hometown proud, Bearcat strong. Back to the game on 101.7 KSAM. Friends, welcome back. A beautiful rendition of our country's national anthem, courtesy of the Sam Houston State University Bearcat Band. Rob Hip, Brian Adams, live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth as we continue. Uh, just a few moments ago, it's a section I started several weeks ago uh, where I had a chance to catch up with some fans. We call it Fans in the Stands. We had a chance a little bit earlier before this one got underway. We'll go to that segment now, and then after that, we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Here is Fans in the Stands. Rob Hip here with Bearcat fans in the stands. I am joined by Dave Schley, who I randomly came across. So this is going to be a great interview. He said hello. We started talking. Dave, I remembered you from the national watch party up in Frisco. You are Isaac Schley's granddad. How are you doing today, man? I'm great. How are you? Doing wonderful. Well, you guys, when you talk about fans, you guys could maybe be considered some of the ultimate fans because you come from Denver, Colorado, but you don't fly. Just tell us a little bit about that journey and what's it, what's it like on the drive. It's uh, it's a 14-hour drive. It's a little rough, but we've learned how to do it correctly. Um, leave early, pace it, and um, however, if, if, if by chance we're coming down, need to be down here two weeks in a row for whatever reason, uh, one of those has to be a flight. Uh, I can't do 14 hours two weeks in a row. I'm, I'm old. I want to ask you, of course, you guys make the journey down here to watch Isaac play, but just what does this Bearcat team meant to you and your family, and uh, just how excited have you been with all the success here recently? It's it's awesome. It's awesome. So uh, Isaac's, this is his second year here. Um, knock on wood. Um, they haven't lost a game since we started coming, which is since he started coming. So it's, it's just been great. It's, it's just more fun than we could imagine. Awesome. Well, Dave, we need to make sure that you continue to come every game and keep that going. Is that all right? We will do that. <laughs> all right. Dave Sly again joining us here for fans in the stands. Before I let you go on the count of three, we got to have an eat them up, cats. You ready, Dave? Yes. One, two, three. Eat, eat them, them up, up, cats. That'll do it for fans in the stands. Back to more pregame. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. Memorial Herman Hospital, McCaffrey Electric, Mike's Hard Lemonade, Moke and Moke Attorneys at Law, Pepsi, and the Armory Apartments. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. 
At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, community is important to us. And as part of this community, we enjoy celebrating the successes of our student athletes, win or lose. Their hard work is worthy of celebration. I'm Greg Smith, owner of Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home. When a need arises, you can trust us to help you and your family celebrate a life well lived. We're Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas for over 20 years. They do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. Season tickets are on sale for 2021-22 basketball season. Season tickets start as low as $99. One price gets you both men's and women's Bearcat basketball. Call 936-294-1729 or go online at gobearcats.com slash tickets to secure your seat today. Bearcat football continues on KSAM. Here's Rob Hip and Brian Adams. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip, Brian Adams. The pageantry of the stadium is beautiful here today as the players started running out of smoke a couple of weeks ago. Well, guess what? Now that smoke has turned orange <laughs> as the Bearcats ran out from the newly beautifully renovated field house and Brian that was a sight to see orange smoke covering everywhere I mean how cool is that I mean bring the team out you got the orange smoke going on you got fans on their feet cheering man what a great time for some college football we are 332 to go before kickoff again thanks for joining us live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth I'm Rob Pipp alongside Brian Adams again today it's Sam Houston at home at Bowers under head coach K.C. Keeler, the Delaware alum from 1981, 5-0 this season, 2-0 in the WAC, and 3-0 in the WAC A-Sun Challenge. This is a WAC A-Sun AQ7 Challenge game here today. Bearcats ranked number one in the stats perform and the AFCA coaches poll. Head coach K.C. Keeler, 248 wins, 95 losses, one tie in his 28th season. He is 74 and 22 in eight wonderful years here at Sam Houston. For the Jacksonville State Gamecocks, making their way to Huntsville today, 3-3 three three overall, 1-0 in the AQ7. Under head coach John Grass, Jacksonville State alum from 1990. They were not rated in the Stats Perform poll, but ranked number 21 in that AFCA FCS coaches poll. His career record, 70-24. and 24. This is also a very well-performed coach. And his eighth season and his record at JSU is the same. So he carries a record that is similar to Coach Keeler. Of course, though, Coach Keeler with two national championships, one of them at Delaware, and then one of them just this past spring here with Sam Houston. We'll go over starting lineups here. We'll start today with the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. We'll go over their offense first as they will start with their six foot three, 217, 217 pound graduate senior out of Jonesboro High School, Georgia. He's also from Clemson, where he played backup quarterback in 2017, Zarek Cooper. And Brian, I know I'm going over these quickly, but this is a team that also has some other talent from the FCS and the SEC with receivers. Yeah, they do. they got a couple of wideouts that came in from the SEC. And let me tell you what, you're going to come in from a division like that, they are going to be talented, and that's something the secondary for Sam Houston is going to be aware of, and they're going to be on them in one-on-one man coverage, and then sometimes they're going to break out into cover two and cover them in zone, but they've got to keep their eyes on those wideouts. Derek Cooper, 89, 165 yards, 53, almost 54%, over 1,000 yards, six touchdowns this season. Again, he's the quarterback. The running back, five foot nine, 215-pound junior out of Columbus, Mississippi. It's Pat Jackson. As we look for the wide receivers, 5'10", 170 pound redshirt freshman out of Alabaster, Alabama. It is Michael Petaway, a 5'10", 180 pound freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama, Jason Jones. We'll also see number 19, 6'198 redshirt junior Quan Charleston, 
also a six foot, 395 pound freshman out of Rainbow City, Alabama, PJ Wells. And then one that we should see some action from today is the six foot one, 185 pound redshirt sophomore out of Alabaster, Alabama. It's Ahmad Edwards. Across that line up front for this Jacksonville State Coop, this Jacksonville State team, six foot seven, 290 pound redshirt sophomore, Tylen Grable at left guard. There's a six foot one, 305 pound junior, Cam Hill at center. Six foot three, 300 pound redshirt junior, number 60, Zach Kangelesi. A right guard, 52. It is a six foot three, 305 pound junior, Josh Wegener. And at right tackle, it is a six foot five, 290 pound junior, number 75, Your Majesty Sanders. Bearcats will receive. We'll go over their starting lineups here as they move things a little bit quicker than anticipated. Brian, we'll get to those for Sam Houston. It is my understanding, and we'll see, uh, that Seth Morgan should be back today as kicker, and that is a good thing. But Bearcats will receive this opening kickoff to get things started. I know you always like that, Brian. Yeah, I really do. I like to get a chance to get the ball first, score first, put pressure on the other team, and that's what Sam Houston is going to try to do right here. Ale Karachik set to kick this one away for Jacksonville State in their white jerseys, red pants, numbers in red. Booms this kick, and it will sell back into the end zone. Cameron Alexander, no opportunity to return. And the Bearcats will have it to start things here on a Saturday afternoon. The number one team in the country moving from left to right. They'll start it from their own 25-yard line. Eric Schmidt and company coming out. You got Jaquez Ezra going to line up on the far left side. Ramon Jefferson in the backfield. Those guys are extremely dangerous in this offensive line, Rob. We don't talk about the Bearcat offensive line enough. They are some big, strong, tough guys, and they will give Eric Schmidt the time he needs today to be successful. Schmidt will stand in the gun. The ball in between the marks, closer to the left hash mark, moving from left to right. Two receivers up to the left, one down to the right. Schmidt will fake the handoff to Jefferson, pulling back, and he's sacked on the first play of the game all the way back to the 13-yard line. Boy, there was a big sack back there in the backfield. Chris Hardy was one of them that was on him, the redshirt freshman out of, uh, looks like he's from Vincent, Alabama. Yeah, they had a linebacker blitz on that play. He came in there untouched. Eric Smith's trying to do a play action pass and look downfield and couldn't get away from the rush. Bring up second down and 19 after the nine-yard loss. Two receivers down to the right. Schmidt throws to the left to Jaquez. Showtime Ezard across the 20, and the turf monster got him at the 21. It was a gain of five. Brings up third down and long. Yeah, not a bad little pass play over there. Unfortunately, the turf monster did get him, but, uh, you know, they made it a little bit more manageable. But, again, this is a big play here. You want to convert on third down against this Jacksonville team. Bring up third down and 14 from the 21-yard line. Schmidt will stand in the gun at the 16. Trips down to the right. Two receivers up to the left. Now in motion is Noah Smith. Schmidt, he'll tuck and run here across the 20, 25, 30, and out of bounds short of the first down marker, and Sam Houston will have to punt on their opening possession. Well, that sack is going to cost them. That's what uh, kind of set them back initially. He, this, it was a linebacker blitz. He came in untouched, dropped Eric Schmidt for a big loss, and they couldn't make that up. But when you got one of the best punters in the country and Matt McRobert coming out, that makes you feel pretty good. Matt McRobert set to punt this one away. Out of Australia, it's the Australian sensation. And one back to receive here for Jacksonville State. 13.32 to go on the Miller time game clock just underway. This one returnable at the 25, but a fair catch is going to be called here by the returnman, Quan Charleston. So the first possession coming up for Jacksonville State. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. We'll be back in a moment from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Back at it here, Jacksonville State will get going quickly from the 25, and it's a rush over to the right side for a gain of 
one yard. Again, I talked about earlier Zarek Cooper, the quarterback here, who has some Clemson experience as a backup back in 2017. This young man leading all sorts of records as he's now the leading career passer at 8,502 yards. A one-yard carry there, though, and the Gamecocks have it here from the 26. No score underway here in the first, moving from right to left. Snap goes back, Cooper looking to the left side. At the 34, it's incomplete. As he well overthrew his intended receiver, P.J. Wells. Good coverage out there by Isaiah Downs. Yeah, Isaiah Downs on man-on-man -on -man coverage was right on him, and Gamecocks had to overthrow it, or that ball would have been picked off. But you're right, he's a talented quarterback, transfer out of Clemson. He's 6'3", 220. He's a big kid with a big, strong arm. It's already third down here for Jacksonville State. Third and... Nine from the 26. Shotgun snap back to the 16. Eludes defenders, pump fakes, throws incomplete. The pressure was there on him, and that ball falls incomplete on the field around the 35-yard line. Again, great defense by Sam Houston. Yeah, give Joseph Wallace, big 95, defensive lineman for Sam Houston, a lot of credit. He flushed Cooper out of the pocket, and the secondary for Sam Houston had their men covered. Great play there by the defense. So now Jacksonville State to punt this one away. Standing around the 10-yard line. They will punt this one. It is Allen Karachi. This one on its way. Filled it at the 35. Ezard wants to take it. Eludes one, spins two, and goes back to the 30. That's a rarity for Jaquez Showtime Ezard as he normally is able to turn it up the field, but there he lost about four yards on the return. Yeah, he did. He tried to slip. He slipped one tackle, tried to spin out of another one, and he wasn't able to. If he would have been able to get out of that one, man, the chances are really good. He'd have had a big return. It's the second possession of the afternoon for Sam Houston. The first one, they had to punt it away. 12.31 to go here. On the Miller Time game clock, and we've got a media timeout. We'll take 60 seconds. We'll be back in a moment. No score from Huntsville from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. 12.31 to go on the Miller Time game clock in the opening quarter of play. No score. Each team has touched the ball once. Both teams have had to punt it. Brian, second opportunity coming up here for Sam Houston, who received the opening kickoff. Yeah, I think they're going to get a chance to, to settle down. They've uh, run one series of downs, you know, three and out, had to punt. But uh, now they're going to come out and be settled down. I think the offensive line is going to pick up some of those uh, blitzes that they – they missed on that first series, and, uh, and I think everything's going to be fine. Game today brought to you in part by our good friends at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And also Ticket Smarter. Nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like TicketSmarter.com. Download the app today. Bearcats in their orange jerseys, numbers in white. The SH logo. On either side, you know, we saw the Sammy the Head Bearcat logo on one side of those helmets, and I think they went back to the SH on both sides, although I can't see the left side of the helmet, Brian. Schmidt will start it here from his own 30-yard line. On the left hash mark, moving from left to right, Ramon Jefferson, the running back, two receivers down to the right. Delayed handoff goes to Jefferson. Through defenders on the right side, 35 near the 40-yard line. Oh, mama, he picks up 10. It's a first down for the Bearcats to the 40. Nice run there by Ramon Jefferson. It's just a handoff. He takes over the right side. Gets a great block by his big tight end, Isaac Sly, to break him loose for a first down. Brennan Tibbs will line up as part of two receivers to the left, two down to the right. 
First down and 10 from the 41 on the left side. A day in motion from right to left. Schmid calling for the shotgun snap at the 35. Stepping back through two defenders still on his feet. Throws left side. This one up. And it's caught at the 40. It went through the hands of a defender. And I believe it was Ife a day down there on the left side. He's got the grab in Jacksonville State Territory at the 38. What a catch by a day. What a play by day. He's watching Eric Schmidt. Eric Smith steps up into the pocket, drops it over the defender. Ife Day catches it for a big first down. Two receivers down to the right, one to the left for Sam Houston. They've got it on the Gamecock 38-yard line. No score, 11.38 to go on the Miller time game clock in the first. Schmidt, shotgun snap, rolls 45 to the right. Still looking, protection's there, and he decides to run this one as he angled his way out of bounds around the 35-yard line. It's a three-yard quarterback gain by Eric Schmidt. That's what makes him so dangerous, Rob, is Eric Schmidt, one, he's very intelligent field general out there. He's got a great arm, but he also runs a 4-4-40. Let me tell you, folks, that is lightning fast, and that can get him out of a lot of trouble. Two receivers up top to the right. Cody Crest, one of them, or to the left, rather. Cody Crest up there to the left. Two receivers down. Harvin and Adai to the right. Schmidt will send Noah Smith in motion. Empty backfield. Passes over to the right side. Lunges. Makes the grab. Chandler Harvin. Boy, he had Velcro on his fingers there on the sideline as he was able to rip that one in for a short gain up to around the 30-yard line. I mean, what a catch there by Harvin. You're right. I mean, Velcro, that's the only way he was going to hang on to that football, and he did. What a catch. Noah Smith back out. Ramon Jefferson will come into the game, but he'll line up as a receiver. Ife Adei, for the moment, I thought he was going to be a back. Now he rotates to the left side alongside Cody Crest. It's third down and a very short one. Ramon Jefferson will now line up behind Eric Schmid at the 35. Shotgun snap, Schmid handoff. Ramon, come on, Jefferson. And he's got the first down to the 27-yard line. Man alive, that was that offensive line we were talking about earlier, Rob. Opened up a nice hole for Jefferson on the left side. Picks up the first down. What great blocking up front. Good play call by Ryan Carty because, like I said, Jefferson came in as a receiver. Then he went back uh, to the back position. Here's Noah Smith in the backfield. Schmid on a first and 10 from the 27. Eludes defenders. He'll run. 25. And he's finally brought down around the 24-yard line. That is the mobility of Eric Schmid. Yeah, very talented quarterback in Eric Schmidt. Very smart son of a coach. I mean, he's been around football all of his life. Very intelligent. Great to have him in the backfield. Schmidt, a perfect three for three. 33 yards through the air so far today. Jefferson, two carries, 13 yards. Noah Smith has yet to have the ball on the ground. Schmidt out there. Noah Smith, the running back to the left. Two receivers to the left. Second and six from the 23. Throw over right side. Cody Crest as he tried to haul it in as he was lunging out of bounds, and it's incomplete around the five-yard line. Well, give Jacksonville State credit. They had Cody Crest pretty well covered, and Eric Schmidt didn't want to throw a pick, so he kind of threw a bad pass, but he was well covered there in the corner. So to bring up third down and six for Sam Houston, they are one of two so far today on third down conversions. As Ramon Jefferson will head over to the sideline, Noah Smith in there as the running back. Trips this time to the left. Chandler Harvin, one of them, alongside Ife Adey and Jaquez Ezard. Nobody to the right. From the 23 of Jacksonville State, Schmidt calling for it. In the gun, back to the 30. Throws left side. It's up for grabs and not able to catch it. It was out of the way of Jaquez Ezard. Some of the fans wanting a flag, and they didn't get it. It's incomplete. Jaquez Ezard was running a go route on the far sidelines. He was in man-to-man -man coverage, covered pretty well. Eric Smith just tries to throw it up, give him a chance at it, and most of the time, I'd say nine out of ten times, he'll win that battle. That was the one time he did not. Seth Morgan back out there for the Bearcats. It's good to see Seth Morgan, a 40-yard field goal attempt as Ryan Humphreys, the heart and soul, to hold it at the 30. 9.29 to go on the Miller time game clock. No score in the first. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick on its way. This one, left side, and it's no good. A rare miss by Seth Morgan. We called him automatic for a reason. That time he missed it. Well, Seth Morgan, the freshman, he was at, he's been out the last couple of weeks, maybe a little bit rusty, but he did. He pulled that one left just a little bit outside of the far left goalpost. The score remains 0-0, zero to zero, 9.23 to go on the Miller Time game clock in the first. We'll step aside. We'll take 60 seconds from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. 
Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest. Conveniently located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat Course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat Course in Huntsville. Hi, this is Will Smith, and I'm proud of our family business, but I'm also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration, and we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! No score, 9.23 to go in the Miller Time game clock here in the first from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Rob Hip, Brian Adams, thanks for joining us for Sam Houston. It was a drive that started on their own 30. They go down, the drive stalls. After a day, he had a big grab. Also, Eric Schmidt with some rushing yards on that drive. And then Seth Morgan, the freshman kicker who has not played the last two games. He's been out. Um, a very rare missed field goal. He was kicking into the wind, and maybe that got up under it and carried it to the left. But nonetheless... Seth Morgan doesn't miss many of them, Brian. Well, he does not. I mean, he is just radar. But that one, he did pull to the left again. He's been out a couple of weeks. I mean, you know, that's not uh, completely, you know, unexpected to have a little bit of rust. But uh, the Bearcat defense, again, in my opinion, the best in the country. He's fixing to take the field here and take uh, Jacksonville State second time around. Zarek Cooper will lead his team back onto the field. Their first drive of the afternoon also stalled. It was a drive that started on their own 25. Cooper here with one back to either side. One lone Gamecock player all the way up top to the right. No one to the left. The handoff will go to one of those up backs, and he's still on his feet. He broke through several defenders. It was Uriah West, who his last game, six carries for 46 yards. The junior out of Douglasville, Georgia. Enough for a first down, a powerful run, all the way across the 35 to the 38-yard line. Well, he took the handoff right up the middle, ran over a Sam Houston uh, Bearcat to pick up that first down. Nice run there from the line of scrimmage. 9.06 to go, clock ticking here on the Miller Time game clock in the first. No score, first and 10 for Jacksonville State from their own 38-yard line, moving from right to left. Cooper stepping back, fires one, and it's incomplete at the 40-yard line on the left side in between the markers and the numbers. That was to Damon Villal Johnson, and it's incomplete to the junior out of Pensacola, Florida. Boy, it hit Johnson right in his hands, and that apparently wasn't the place to throw it because he dropped it. Had he had caught it, he'd have picked up another probably few more yards. Second down and 10. Ball remains on the 38-yard line. 8.55 to go on the clock here in the first. In motion is P.J. Wells. Instead, the keeper here, Cooper, will lower his right shoulder, and he powers his way forward up to around the 42-yard line. It's a gain of four or so. Bring up third down and long, where the Bearcats' defense has been exceptional over the past few games. Yeah, Cooper's taking the ball. He looks downfield, Rob. Doesn't see a wide receiver open. Takes it himself, and he's a big guy at six foot three. He decides to lay his shoulder in on it to try to pick up another first down. The Sam Houston defense only allows 34% on third down. So far, 0 for 1 today, Jacksonville State. Cooper, we got a false start, baby. That one's coming back five. Yep, first penalty of the game. Going to go third against down. Jacksonville State. False start, big break there for Sam Houston especially it being third down. So what would have been, well, it was third and five. That's going to bring up third down and 10 now for Jay State. Zion McCollum, the corner. They are putting four up front here for Sam Houston. Third and 10, trips to the right. Cooper stepping back, throws over center. This one caught, has a man in rhythm. 25-20 in between the markers, finally down at the 15-yard line. Oh, man, what a catch is the wide receiver Damon Philo Johnson had separation and ran it all the way down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, Johnson's up top, and he runs a deep post route, and Cooper hits him in stride. Man, that's one of those big wideouts we were talking about. you got to keep your eyes on those guys. Man, they are super talented. 
And that was a big play there, there are for Jacksonville State. Play. Offside, defense, in the neutral zone at the snap. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 95, defense. That penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Yeah, I didn't even see Joseph Wallace back there with the roughing the passer, and that's uncharacteristic of the Sam Houston team. They haven't committed a lot of penalties this year. I didn't even see the flags back there, Brian, because we were looking all the way to the left. The flags happened all the way back to our right. And as you just heard, a penalty there by Sam Houston. That'll put it inside the 10-yard line at the 8 now for Jacksonville State. Yeah, that's unfortunate. One, they get a big play. Then you have a roughing the passer to give them more yards. And that's not what you want to do against this Jacksonville State talented team. Here's Cooper in the gun. High snap. Hands off to his back to the left side. Bouncing through defenders across the 5 and finally pushed out of bounds at the 5-yard line. It was a good run on the play there by Ron Wiggins. McCollum and his teammates were back there to push him out of bounds after a short gain up to around the six-yard line. Yeah, he just takes the handoff around the left side, picks up a few yards on the carry. McCollum and company coming up from his safety spot to make the tackle. Good play there by the Sam Houston defense. Wiggins will head over to the sideline. It is second down and goal from the six for Jacksonville State. No score, 7.50 to go in the first. Cooper gets the handoff, wants to take it here across the five. Easily just... Runs his way in, had to bounce through one defender, and got in for six yards. Yep. Six-yard touchdown run. Yep, well, it's his quarterback draw up the middle. I mean, uh, walks in almost untouched. And Jacksonville State strikes first here this afternoon. Six-yard touchdown run puts Jacksonville State on the board. 6-0, 7.44 to go on the Miller time game clock. The extra point kick here by Allen Karachik. The hold, the kick on its way, and good. 7-0, early lead. Gamecocks with it. We'll step aside for 60 seconds. Don't go anywhere, folks. From Ben Wagner, this is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas. For over 20 years, they do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. So I'm here with Clint Mack from Wiesner of Huntsville. What would you say to someone who has never been to Wiesner of Huntsville? Come try the experience for yourself. We do things different here. We're a very relational business. We're not a transactional business, and we want to make you feel like you're part of our family. Is there a Wiesner difference or a Wiesner experience? There is. It would be honesty and integrity. We've stood by that, and we are going to continue that in a world that doesn't necessarily live by those rules. Well, you've heard from Clint Mack at Wiesner of Huntsville, and if you haven't tried Wiesner of Huntsville, go do so. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. 7.44 to go on the Miller Time game clock here in the first as Jacksonville State on their second possession takes the lead. The first score of the game goes to the Gamecocks. A drive that started on their own 22-yard line after a very rare Seth Morgan missed field goal. They go all the way down the field, capped off by a six-yard touchdown run. Quarterback keeper uh, by Zarek Cooper. And again, with 7.44 to go, 7-0, your score. Yeah, Cooper makes a big pass, and they get a big play out of it. And in the tail end of it, they get a roughing the quarterback call. And that pushes them even closer to the end zone. And, uh, of course, they took advantage of it. And that's what good teams do. You know, if you're going to get a penalty, take advantage of it. And that's what they did. So now Sam Houston finds themselves one touchdown in the hole. But you know what? This is a, a very talented team. They don't get frustrated. They don't get flustered. You know, they're going to come back and they're going to play some good sound football. I want to welcome everybody in. Joining us on social media with our special In the Booth video presentation, Ron Clear, southbound from Marshall, Texas, listening live. Appreciate you, Ron. Jonathan Knobloch is always joining us from Houston. Also, Bernard Boston saying hello. And our good friend, Nikki McRobert in Australia, Matt's mother, saying good morning. It was 6 a.m. when she got up to watch this game and listen to it today. Good morning, Nikki. Thank you for watching. She also says, I can't wait till you see me as a fan in the stands. And we can't wait for that either. Alan Karachik set to kick this one away here for Jacksonville State from the 35. As he will swing up to the ball, swings his right leg. This one end over end, sailing, and uh, the 
Bearcats will just let it go in to the end zone for a touchback. One of the returnmen down there for Sam Houston said, I don't want anything to do with this. It was Weston Stevens, the freshman running back. Well, Karachik had that 10-mile-an-hour win behind him. Yeah, blows it through the end zone. So Sam Houston's going to get the ball on the 25-yard line. Eric Smith and company out ready to go. Eric Schmidt will lead his team back out there. There's some discussion going on with the Jacksonville State coaching staff. As, boy, one of their players out there seemed a little bit hot about something. Uh, Nicarlo Hop Harper was not happy about something. His coach had to pull him off the field. It's first and 10. Schmidt from the 25. Stands in the gun. One back to his right. Two receivers up top to the left. The handoff to Ramon Jefferson, the back. Jefferson trying to break through several tackles. And initially he was stopped for what looked like a two-yard loss. He was able to turn something into a one-yard gain Ramon up to the 26. Well, Ramon Jefferson takes the handoff. There wasn't a hole, so he tries to slide down the line of scrimmage, finding it a crease. He kind of found one, just picks up one yard. It's second down and nine from the 26. Bearcats trailing 7-0. Handoff Jefferson going behind his left guard. This time only a one-yard gain again up to the 27-yard line. Brings up third down and a long seven. Yeah, this is an important third down here for Sam Houston. They need to convert that again. That's something that uh, all levels of football you talk about, you know, converting on third down and winning that part of the game. Which they're already one touchdown down. They need to convert right here and move the chains. Third down and eight from the 27. Schmidt in the gun at the 23. Trips to the right. One lone Bearcat to the left. Low snap. Has it the 20. Schmidt wants to run. He's got daylight across the 35. Slides down at the 40. Eric Schmidt, first down, quarterback keeper on third down and eight. How about that for Eric Schmidt and the Bearcats? He didn't hesitate one second. He took that snap and shotgun, took it straight up the middle, picks up the first down. Great run by that young man. Again, that's what he brings to this game. A 4-4-40 and a great arm. Bearcats have the first down at the 38-yard line on their own side, favoring the left hash mark. Empty backfield here for Schmidt, five wide. Passes in the flats over the left side. Noah Smith trying to wiggle through defenders across the 40, and he lunges forward. There's a flag in the backfield, though, around the... Oh, man, around the 45. We'll see what that was. Maybe a little bit of a pass interference back there, Brian. Well, that's back on Jacksonville State's side of the ball. Penalties against Jacksonville State. That's going to help Sam Houston. The officials, did they say anything? I didn't hear them say anything. Well, right? they, well the indication was against Jacksonville. Still first down and five. So it is a five-yard gain. It goes up to the 38-yard line. Actually, the 40, what are they calling that, Brian? Around the 48-yard line. 43, sorry, handoff, no, it's a fake. Schmidt looking on the left side, airs one out. Has a day open, but he overthrew him by about three yards. It's incomplete on the left side at the 15. That would have been a touchdown. Yeah, Erickson would love to have that one back. I mean, he had all day to throw the football. He fake day on the sideline, beat his guy by about five yards, and Schmidt overthrows him about five yards. Boy, they'd love to have that one back. Brings up second down and five, Schmidt. Stands in the gun, trips down to the right, near the right hash mark. One Bearcat up to the left, Schmidt calls for it, steps back to the 35, throws this time right side. And boy, just something happened there with Eric Schmidt on his release as Ezard was wide open. It was incomplete around the 40-yard line on the right side. And not sure what happened there, Brian. Well, I'm not either. He's thrown it to the right. That's two passes in a row that he's thrown the ball. Uh, over his re intended receiver, I and mean, I'm not sure if he's following through and, and leaning into the throw. Obviously not on those last two, and that's something he really needs to work on. 5.40 to go in the first on the Miller time game clock. Sam Houston trailing 7-0. Schmidt in the gun, two receivers to the right. Schmidt looking, passes over. This one into the hands of Brennan Tibbs. Tibbs may have got the first down as he plowed right through the defender, Nakara Harper, who was out there after him. And that is enough for a Bearcat first down just inside the 50-yard line. You know, I'm also kind of noticing Eric Smith throwing a little sidearm, and that's something I haven't really seen all year long. I don't know if there's uh, something behind that or what exactly. Trips down to the right. 
for Sam Houston. Isaac Sly out there is the tight end. One Bearcat up to the left. It's first and 10 from the 48. A day in motion from right to left. Schmidt pitches it back to a day. A day, they read that one beautifully. And a day, only a one yard gain up to the 49. Yeah, day coming in motion. Snap the ball, toss it to him. Trying to make him cut through the center guard gap. Nothing there. Dalton Meyer, the tight end, now into the game on the left side. He and Ryan Humphreys have their own podcast. It's always a lot of fun to listen to called Walk On Radio. They were at a local Huntsville establishment just a few days ago with that. Second down and nine from the 49. Handoff, Ramon, come on, Jefferson. Across the 50 as he lunges forward on the left side to the 45-yard line. The power of Ramon Jefferson is something to see, friends. Boy, he is such a powerful runner, Rob, like you just said. He takes the handoff. It's an inside handoff, and he goes across the grains on the left side. Makes this third down opportunity to be very manageable. It's third down and three. Sam Houston has it on the Jacksonville State 45. Left hash mark, 4.09 to go. And that Miller time game clock here in the first as Dalton Meyer will head out of the game. Isaac Schley back in there. Ezard and... A day, the receivers in a tight formation to the right. Eric Schmidt stands in the shotgun at the 50. Wanting to pass here, rotates to the right. Schmidt throws from his right. Has a day, and it's in and out of his hands. That is a rare dropped pass by Ife a day or a rare miss for a day. Day lines up on the far left side, cuts across the field at 18 to 20 yards, all the way across. Eric Schmidt's rolling out to him, and I think he caught Ife Day in mid-stride, and that kind of threw him off. Matt McRobert, the Australian sensation, set to punt another one away here for the second time. The third possession for Sam Houston, trailing 7-0. Here with 3.47 to go in the first. McRobert stands on the 41. Snap back to him, taking his time. Boy, he's got all day. He was waiting on the Jacksonville State players to come to him. And a beautiful punt. Oh, Mama, it's filled at the two-yard line. Wow. What a punt by Matt McRobert. That young man sat there and held the ball for about a three count before he punted it and then drops it on the two-yard line. We'll keep things right here, Brian. I have never seen oh, that man. much time. It was, I know he wasn't, but it was almost like he was taunting him, saying, are you guys going to come after me? And that gave Matt McRobert plenty of time, literally three seconds, as he was flipping the ball around in his hands. And after those three finally came to him, he punted it. What a play by Matt McRobert. Oh, what a talented punter Matt McRobert is. So much fun to watch uh, him play. It's the third possession for Jacksonville State. They will start backed up on their own two-yard line, trying to run and get some separation. Only a gain of one to the running back up to the three on the right side. Trevor Williams, linebacker for the Bearcats, on that tackle. Maybe picks up a yard on that carry. This is a great opportunity for this defense as they've got Jacksonville pissed all the way back. Zarek Cooper in the gun. Josh Samuel, the back to his left. He's a junior. One receiver to either side. He'll send a man in motion from right to left. The handoff goes to Samuel, and Samuel found some daylight across the five to around the seven-yard line in between the right hash of the numbers. And I think, actually, Cooper keep that football. I think that was a quarterback draw up the middle, was it not? Yeah, I didn't see. I thought for a moment it was a handoff to Samuel. It may have been a quarterback draw. Well, they're over there looking at the sidelines, Rob, trying to figure out what they're going to do here on third down. It's third down and five for Jacksonville State. 80 total yards. They only have 33 on the ground, 47 through the air, two first downs trying to get their third. Cooper in the gun, stepping back, throws in the flats to the left side, has a man. He eludes one defender. He's not going to get there. He didn't get the first down. He was down at the nine-yard line. The Orange Storm said, no way, baby, and they stopped him. Fourth down coming up, and Jacksonville State will have to punt deep in their own end zone. Boy, oh, this is going to give the Bearcats great opportunity. You got Ezra's going to be back somewhere around midfield, maybe a little over on the Bearcats' side, and he is dangerous when he has a chance. Oh, 
Jack Dawson set to punt this one away in between the K and the A. That one almost blocked. Gets it away. Ezard fields it in rhythm at the 50 to the 40. 35. Ezard dancing with the Stars through defenders, and he's finally down on the left side at the 33-yard line. He ran absolutely smack dab into that ball, took off with it, and a great return for Jaquez. Showtime, Ezard. That's what he does for you. I mean, he is the best in the country what he does. And man, he is lights out. Gives the Bearcats great field position to start this drive. They will start Sam Houston on the Jacksonville State 33 yard line. Trailing seven to zero, 132 to go in the first. Two receivers down to the right. Schmidt will stand in the gun as he always does. Ramon Jefferson the back to his right side. Schmidt claps for it once, gets it on the second clap. Delayed handoff, Jefferson. Ping pong, left side. 20, 15, 10, 5. Ramon, come on, Jefferson. 33 yards, and that's a Bearcat touchdown. What a play. What blocking up front by that O-line for the Bearcats to open up that hole for Jefferson to run through, and he goes all the way in untouched. Offside, number 50 defense, lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined, result of the play, touchdown. Ramon Jefferson was not a threat last week, but here, a 33-yard touchdown run. He did have a touchdown last week. That is his sixth of the season, and a big one right there for Ramon, come on, Jefferson. Boy, he is fun to watch. When he gets that chance to let that play develop, that hole opens up, he only needs a split second to make that break and he was off to the races. Here is Seth Morgan from the Ryan Humphreys hold for the extra point kick on its way. This one good, and we are tied at seven apiece here in Huntsville, Texas at Bowers Stadium. We'll take 30 seconds. We'll be back in a moment from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Moments ago for Sam Houston, their fourth possession of the afternoon. It was a short drive that started from the Jacksonville State 33-yard line, and that's all it took. Ramon Jefferson, the running back, 33 yards into the end zone on the left side. And after a Seth Morgan extra point kick, we are tied seven apiece. 125 to go on the Miller Time game clock here in the first. Yeah, give our buddy Matt McRobert, the Australian sensation, lots of credit for Penn and Jacksonville State way back in their end and the defense did the rest. What a great set of downs for the offense to come in there and capitalize. Cameron Hearn looks to the right, looks to the left, runs up to the ball at the 35, gets it on its way, it's end over end, drops at the five. On the left hash mark, the return into the 15. Wiggles in between defenders across the 20. He's finally drugged down at the 25 yard line. A great tackle on that play on special teams by Tony Williams, the junior wide receiver for your Bearcats. Well, big Joseph Wallace and company coming back out here. Man, I'm telling you, that defense, they are just aggressive and fast. That is what makes them so tough. And they got one of the best secondaries in the country with the McCollum twins back there. Trevor Williams, linebacker, man, what a tough defense Jacksonville State's about to face. Zarek Cooper, the Gamecock quarterback, will lead his team back onto the field, starting from their own 26-yard line, tied at seven apiece. And he hands off here to the left side, and not much there, only about a two-yard gain in between the Bearcat claw and the left hash marks. He handed it off to Josh Samuel, and the defense able to stop him. Only a short gain on that play. They'll give him two. It's second down and eight. Well, somehow Cooper's going to probably try to draw that linebacker in and then go over the top. That's what they've been trying to do so far this afternoon. Here's Cooper on shotgun again, eludes one defender, two, sack, baby! Oh, baby, he was slammed by Jahari K. It's not okay if you're the quarterback after Jahari gets him. The big double nickel just collapsed on top of Cooper. He was looking downfield, nobody open, and Jahari K made him pay for it. It's a quarterback sack by Jahari K. 
It sets him back, third down and 14 from the 22. Cooper on the left hash mark, two receivers to either side. Steps back, has to haul that one in with the right arm. Throws, has a man open, it's Samuel, the running back. Breaks through one defender, now two, and he only gets it up to around the 27-yard line. Well short of the first down, and another punt by Jacksonville State coming up. Boy, this Orange Storm defense so efficient on third down. They only allow their opponents about 35% of the time. Quarter. Time out on the field. And that will take us to the end of the first. Great stop there to end that quarter by Sam Houston. No question about it. They're going to get the ball back in great territory again. Jaquez Ezra going to get another shot at it. And man alive, that defense is just playing lights out football. We'll step aside. We'll take a break. We are all tied up here in Huntsville, Texas, in the 200th game in the history of Bauer Stadium, 7-7. to -7. We'll be back in 60 seconds from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Second quarter about to get underway here. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Thanks for joining us. Tied at seven apiece, Sam Houston hosting Jacksonville State University. The Gamecocks, it's the first time these teams have met since 2015 and the first time that Sam Houston has hosted them since 2001. Brian, as we look, we're situated around the 40-yard line. There is some rain starting to move. Uh, looks like into our area. Nathan has it on radar, and we can see those ominous clouds in our distance as uh, we look over. What direction is that? To the west. Yeah, to the west. It looks like we got some rain clouds kind of forming and coming our way, but uh, right now, no rain and uh, then we got a good football game going on. I want to appreciate everybody who's joining us again. Thank our good friends over at Talent Sausage in Riverside. Also a Sam Houston Athletic supporter. Again, Talent Sausage located in Riverside. Head on over there. They got some good sausage, man. It's a great place to go. Oh, they do. Man, they processed a couple of my deers there. Man, they're terrific. Also want to thank everybody joining us in the booth. Dennis Griffin sending us a message on the Facebook feed saying he's listening to KSAM in the stands. Appreciate you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. And Dennis is one of a flood of Bearcat Orange that is out there today. If you look down from us, Brian, it's a beautiful sight. Even the visitor side, there's orange almost covering it as well. I mean, it is a packed day here at homecoming for Sam Houston. There is, Rob, tons of orange everywhere. Yeah, it is homecoming. We got so wrapped up in our pregame that today is homecoming, of course. The Bearcat Alley was packed with so many wonderful folks and good food, good drinks, of course. And then yesterday, or on Thursday, they had the homecoming parade, and that was a beautiful sight as well. Many businesses and community leaders and just community Bearcat fans getting involved with that as well. We'll switch the side here as we go into the second. Jacksonville State will now kick into the wind, and it is windy out there today. Jaquez Ezzard set to receive around the 35-yard line. Jack Dawson has already punted it twice today. He'll have to punt this one away from around his own 12-yard line. Better bet you that Sam Houston wants to get in there on him. He does get this one away, a very short punt. Ezzard will fair catch it at the 39-yard line. So again, good field position here for Sam Houston, this time backed up on their own side, but you'll take that any day from your own 39. Absolutely you will. Eric Smith's gonna have the wind at his back now, so now he's gonna have to have a little bit more touch on the football when he goes down deep. But again, this is opportune time. They get great field position to start this drive out. 
Sam Houston has it. We are tied. The momentum has shifted in favor of the Bearcats. 14.55 to go on the Miller time game clock here in the second. Schmid standing in the gun from the 39-yard line. Three receivers up top to the right, one lone. Bearcat is Ezzard to the left. Schmid claps from it. Shotgun snap, left hash mark. Through two defenders, starting to break away. Now to the right side, Schmid will run to the 40. He wants to tuck and run. He'll slide and dive up to around the 42-yard line. Heads up play, Eric Schmid. You will very rarely see him throw something ill-advised, and he does a great job right there, tucking and running, avoiding a sack, and picking up a few extra yards. Yeah, he looks downfield. There's nobody open downfield, so he's trying to buy the receiver some time, and then he just decides to go ahead and take the run, slide, get a few yards. Eric Schmid, 5 of 10, 39 yards here in this ball game. Right hash mark, fake it, handoff, no, and it goes to Cody Crest, and Crest is dropped in the backfield. I say dropped, he was actually stood up. Brian, though, there is a flag up there around the 45-yard line. A Bearcat helmet popped off on that play from Colby Thomas, and we'll see what this call is. Well, they're over on the 40-yard line discussing it. The white hat and the umpire. The Hall family listening from Maryland on the TuneIn app. Appreciate the Hall family. Good to hear from you. Personal foul, number 52 offense, continuing to participate after he lost his helmet. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's second down. Uh, that's one of those. Yeah, that's a safety call is what it is. Basically, it's a, you know, you got to play safe. But I admire Colby Thomas. His helmet pops off. He says, you know what, I'm still going to play, but you can't do that. you got to stop. Well, see, that's tough, man. You're talking about this is football, yeah. and you're, gonna, you're in the middle of the action. You're not going to stop nope. if your helmet's on or off. Ryan Thornton, the uh, referee tonight, the umpire, Scott Johnson. That was Ryan Thornton that you heard just a few moments ago. We'll get back at it here. Now it's second down and 22. Tough call on the Bearcats here from their own 27-yard line. Schmidt on the right hash near the WAC logo. will step back at the 20. Quickly throwing, a delivering, and it's incomplete. Just something off about the timing as Schmidt was looking to Ife Adey, and that is now the second time this afternoon that he has overthrown Ife Adey. Yeah, and that's his third overthrow of the day, two to Adey. He was running a seam route. He was wide open, and Eric Schmidt is just off some, for some reason this afternoon. He's just throwing the ball a little high. Incomplete, third down and 22. Big third down here for Sam Houston. 13.55 to go on the clock here in the second. Tied at seven apiece. Nobody now in the backfield for Schmidt. He stands in the gun of the 21. The right hash, stepping back. Good protection by his defenders. He wants to run here over the left side. Still has room to pass, throw, side arms it, and it's incomplete to Isaac Schlide. Well, I'm telling you, as I watch Eric Schmidt run around trying to find an open receiver, there's just something off with his throwing motion today. He's thrown some sidearm out in the flats, overthrow several receivers today. I'm not sure what's going on there. Sam Houston not able to take advantage of the good field position, that ball, and especially after that unfortunate call against Colby Thomas when his helmet came off and he continued to play. That ought to be one of those penalties, Brian, where they, you know, they don't have warnings in football. They yeah. should just give you a, a one-time warning. Oh, you have the sideline warning, you know, the, the warning if your teammates are up on the sideline. <laughs> McRobert set to punt this one away from the 15. Booming, spiraling punt for Matt McRobert. It'll drop at the five and unfortunately rolls into the end zone. Boy, he got all of that one and just out kicked his coverage and they could not get down there in time to stop the ball inside the five. Man, what a kick. That was a beautiful punt by Matt McRobert. I know that he's upset with himself, but that was one heck of a punt by that young man. Well, not only that, but he had a blitz coming in on him, and he had to get kicked the ball fast that time as opposed to the last time when he held it for three counts, and he just smoked it. Ryan Humphreys went over and gave him a pat on the back, told him everything's all right, man. Both of those young men, we've got a chance to get to know quite a few of these players. They're all exceptional. Ryan Humphreys is just a great young man on this team. I call him the heart and soul. He's a leader on this team. Very respectful young man alongside Matt McRobert as well. Jahari Kay is another one of those guys. We'll start talking about him before long, Brian. We'll name all 90 or plus well, of them. I mean, every one of them are just so nice and respectful, good guys. So much fun to be around them. And they embrace you and I everywhere we go. And it's so much fun. 
It's seven to seven, tied 13-38 to go on that Miller time game clock. We're in a media timeout. We'll take 30 seconds. We'll be back in a moment from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Seven seven, we're tied. Thirteen thirty eight to go here in the second. Thanks for joining us from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. As Jacksonville State will have it here in just a few moments, starting their fifth possession of the night. We'll get back to some more of our fans joining us. Aquarius Parker joining us, cheering on Jacksonville State University. I know that we broadcast for Sam Houston, but we always want to welcome in the visiting teams as well. So, Aquarius Parker, thank you for joining us. Brian Carroll also cheering on the Bearcats. We appreciate you, Brian. Flying high, as always, joining us on the feed. We appreciate you flying high. Felicia Carter as well. She's cheering on JSU. Tony Kulak joining us, saying, let's go. Eat them up, cats. And my mother, Shirley Hip, north of Austin. Love you, Mom. Great to hear from you. Had a baby shower this morning. Bridget was back in Georgetown in a baby shower. We got a little baby coming November 29th. Braylon will be here, man. Man, that's exciting. It's going to be in the middle of playoff. <laughs> I'm excited, man. <laughs> So here we go, it's Jacksonville State. They'll start this drive from their own 20, moving from left to right. Cooper gets a snap, will hand off to his running back to the left side, a powerful run up to the 25-yard line on the left mark. Brings up second down and five. It's a good run there by Uriah West. Yeah, number 35, Tim Hart, linebacker for Bearcats, in on that stop. Five-yard run on that play, though. You can't give those kind of runs up. This Jacksonville State team has been very successful over the years, especially against FBS teams. You don't hear about that a lot from FCS teams playing FBS. We'll talk about that in a minute. Second and five from the 25. Cooper handoff here, and it drilled in the backfield. Nowhere to go. They're going to give forward progress up to the 22, but it's a three-yard loss on the play. As Ryle West that time, they read him like a children's picture book and set it back. Boy, Joseph Wallace, Trace Moscardo. All those guys in on that stop, Jahari K. I I mean, that front four for Sam Houston is, and man, they're nasty. It's third down and eight. The Orange Storm trying to hold them here. One of four on the day for the Gamecocks. Cooper in the gun. One receiver goes from right to left. It's Damon Philo Johnson. Cooper looking to pass. Punt fakes once. Pressure's there. Throws over center. Has a man wide open. First down at the 32. Unfortunate. Oh, my goodness. Cooper found his tight end. Wide open with nobody around him. Right across the sticks. Catches the ball. Picks up the first down. It's the freshman, Sean Brown. Only one grab for five yards on the season. That was his second grab. and None bigger than that one there just moments ago. Oh, you're right, Rob. That was his biggest catch ever. Up to the 32-yard line, first down and 10, tied at seven apiece, 12-14 to go here in the second. Cooper in the gun, fakes the handoff, throws over left, very incomplete at the 42-yard line. He was trying to find P.J. Wells, and great coverage on that play by Sam Houston. It was Taylor Blaylock, I believe. Yeah, Zion McCallum on the coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets a hand on it. Looks like he kind of deflected the ball away. Good play there by McCollum. Yeah, it was McCollum, beg your pardon. I saw a zero in there somewhere, Brian. I don't know where that came from. Bring up second down and 10 for JSU on the 32. Cooper on the left, hash in the gun. Fakes the handoff, keeps it on the option to the left side and angling his way and he's brought down on the play short of the first down. Good defense again by Sam Houston with the stop there on that left side. Well, this is an important third down here for Jacksonville State. I mean, they're going against the wind. The game is tied up. Here we are in the second quarter. They need to try to, they're going to stay with Sam Houston. They need to try to push these chains. Joe Wallace and Darrell Hawkins-Williams in on that tackle. Third down and five. They converted the previous one. Jacksonville State from the 37. Cooper. 
Kicks in once, now sets a man in motion. Wells from right to left. One receiver to either side. Cooper stepping back, looking over left side, throws it, has his man upended. He caught it, but he's short of the first down. Oh, he threw it to his runner, Josh Samuel, and the Bearcats with a huge stop. One yard short of the first down marker. What a play by Daryl Hawkins Williams to drop him a yard short on that pass play. What a great open field tackle. One yard short of the first down is the official spot. And Alan Karadzic set to kick, pump this one away again. Jaquez Ezzard set back to receive. As it's starting to get a little darker here at Bowers as those ominous clouds are coming over. Here's the punt high in the air. Ezzard at the 12, fair catch call. And maybe a little smack talking yeah. going on there by a JSU player as he went face mask to face mask with Ezzard. 7-7, seven seven, we're tied, friends. 10.36 to go on the Miller Time game clock here in the second. We'll take a, let's call it a, let's go 60 seconds on a media timeout. Stay with us from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Curious about what real estate agents enjoy the most? It's about reminding our clients that dreams really do come true. Remax is the number one real estate company nationwide. Remax Prime Properties is a locally owned family business in Huntsville. Need a realtor knowledgeable in our area? Call one of our experienced agents and let us guide you home. Remax Prime Properties is located at 1215 Financial Plaza, Huntsville, Texas, and is a proud partner of SHSU Athletics. Eat them up, cats. Those clouds coming over Bowers, luckily there's not a drop of rain falling from them yet, though as we look to the west, you can see some of those rain clouds that are producing rain. But for right now, we are staying dry. It's 7-7, tied ball game, 10.36 to go on the Miller Time game clock. In the second, Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams. Thanks for spending your afternoon with us here. Saturday afternoon, college football doesn't get much better than this, my friend. No, it certainly doesn't. You know, they got the lights on now here at Bowers. As Rob was just describing, well, we got some ominous clouds kind of making their way around the stadium, so the lights are on. But man alive, what a great atmosphere and a big crowd we have here this afternoon. I don't have any other score updates. I believe this is the early game of the day if you look in the A-Sun and the WAC, the only one being played right now. Midwestern State is on the road at Tarleton State, 6 p.m. Kickoff scheduled there. Stephen F. Boston at Dixie State, Central Arkansas at Lamar University. As of right now, we don't have any score updates in any of those other contests. They haven't started yet, but we'll keep you updated as we have any score updates. In 10.36 to go here in this one, Sam Houston has it for the sixth time this afternoon. They will start backed up on their own 13-yard line, moving from right to left. Schmidt in the gun. Running back out there, I believe it is Noah Smith. Very tight formation here. Ife Ade will go in motion. The entire team is in between the hash marks. Handoff on the reverse sweep to Ife Ade to the 15, and Ade lunges forward to the 19-yard line. I like that trigger-ration there, and Ade did a great job. Yeah, I did too. It was kind of a little hesitation. Eric Smith turns his back, hands the ball off to uh, Ade, and he kind of slips. Still picks up pretty good yards on that carry. Bring up second down and three from the 20. On the left hash mark, Schmidt in the gun, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right. Now he sees a lane. He wants to run across the 20, 25, slides for the first down at the 26-yard line. In between the marks, it's Eric Schmidt, and the Bearcats move the chain. Boy, again, I keep saying it over and over. That's what he brings to this ball game. I mean, nobody open downfield. He tucks it, runs, and moves the chains. Ideal. Sam Houston quickly back up to the line. Ramon Jefferson, the running back, in between the marks on the left side. Two receivers to the left, one to the right for Sam Houston. Tied at seven apiece. Now Jefferson will go to the right as Schmid will keep it here. Ramon Jefferson trying to sell the fake handoff, and Schmid will lose yardage on the play. Uh, back to around the 23-yard line. That's a three-yard loss. Well, Jacksonville State had a linebacker safety blitz called. 
Eric Smith runs right into it, loses a couple of yards on that carry. Seven seven we are. Eric Schmidt, five of 12, 39 yards only, passing Ramon Jefferson six carries for 54 yards and a score. Of course, he had that long 33 yard touchdown run. Second and 13 here for Sam Houston. Schmidt in the gun, looking to pass, throws this one left side. It is caught by Brennan Tibbs, and Tibbs has another Bearcat first down at the 37 yard line on the left side. Move those chains, baby. Nice pass there by Eric Schmidt. I mean, it was Tibbs running an out route right past the sticks. Schmidt hitting perfectly on his cut. Moves the chains, first down, Sam Houston. Boy, those timing routes, when they throw those out routes like that, Rob, they are the hardest play to cover. Cody Crest, the lone Bearcat to the right, down to the left is Ezzard, first and 10. Sam Houston on their own 38, 835 to go here in the second, tied at seven. Schmidt claps twice, fakes the handoff, left hash mark, throws from his right arm. Ezzard has it, 50, 45, and he's out of bounds. In the Jacksonville State territory, Jaquez Ezzard grabbing it for the second time today. Yeah, Eric Schmidt looking really confident on those last two throws, drills Ezzard right in the numbers. Picks up another first down, great thrust. Smith family in Horseshoe Bay, Texas, listening on KSAM. Appreciate you guys. We'll get to that Bearcat number shortly. First and 10 from the 44, pass over Ezzard. Boy, he does a little stutter step at the 40, finds daylight, 30. Ezzard still on his feet to the 20 on the right side, and he's out of bounds at the 16. Showtime, dancing with the stars, making it look easy on that play. I mean, that guy's just unreal. I mean, takes a nice little hitch pass out in the flats. Makes a couple of moves, picks up another first down, does it effortlessly. I mean, when I say dancing, the, the young man looked like he was dancing out there. Just an unbelievable e effort by Ezzard. It's first and 10, Bearcats in the red zone. 7-7, seven, seven. we're tied, 7.44 to go. Trips down to the left, one lone Bearcat to the right. Schmid will send Brennan Tibbs in motion from left to right. Schmid. Pitches it back. This time it goes over to Ife a day. A day left side 10, 5, a day lunges forward and he is drilled at the two yard line. Boy, the big O absolutely drilled. Ife a day. Jamari Jennison would not let him in. I thought a day was going to have it. He didn't get there, but it was still a nice run. Great run, an end around run. A day takes the ball, cuts it up the middle. Finds all kinds of running room, gets it to the two, lowers his head, and gets drilled by Jacksonville State. Nice run, though. And we've got an injured Jacksonville State player down there on the field. It is uh, Nicario Harper. We'll take 30 seconds. We'll be back in a moment. The Bearcats threatening in the end zone, trying to take the lead for the first time. We'll be back in 30 from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest. Conveniently located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat Course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat Course in Huntsville. Back at it live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Friends, Rob Hip alongside the former Bearcat quarterback, Brian Adams. I haven't said that yet, Brian. I know you were waiting on it. 7-7 seven to seven we are. We're only <laughs> almost a half time. I, just, I wanted to wait a little bit. And we still have that injured Jacksonville State player. Get to some more of those messages coming in. Again, the Smith family in Horseshoe Bay, Texas, was listening on KSAM. By the way, that Bearcat fan text line is open at 512 522-9105. Again, send us a text message. Bearcat fan text line is open. 512-522-9105. Also have some comments coming in on our In the Booth social media feeds as Andrea Bayless Corley listening in Leveland, Texas, just west of Lubbock, saying, eat them up. And I like what, this is when you know that you're a just dedicated Bearcat fan. Get this. Andrea's 16-year-old daughter told her this, quote, my mom, my teacher, has an SFA shrine, Stephen F. Austin shrine. I need to drop this class. It's going to be bad for my GPA. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? That fan line is awesome. We get messages literally from all over the world, Australia, Germany, you know, all over the United States. We love it. We appreciate it. And just keep sending. Under that may be the the uh, the message of the year that we've received yeah, so far. Just I good know. just good fun. Mark Bellamy also joining us. Cats touchdown coming soon. Go boys from Oz. Appreciate you, Mark, because that injured Jacksonville State player was eventually able to walk off with a little bit of assistance. So both teams are still huddled up around the 15-yard line on each of their respective sidelines. We are 7-7, seven to 7-16 seven, <coughs> seven, to go here in the first on that, or in the second on that Miller time game clock. Bearcats with 198 total yards, 96 through the air. They already have over 100 on the ground and 11 first downs compared to only three for Jacksonville State. Sam Houston has been able to move the ball. They've just missed on some opportunities. Right here, they've got to cash it in as they're on the two-yard line. No, no doubt about it. I mean, you get it down inside the five-yard line in the red zone. I mean, you know, they've had that record of inside the red zone, punching it in. They've done a great job all year long doing it. But, man, I'm telling you, you can't let a team like this, Jacksonville State, hang around. You need to put them away when you get the opportunity. Coach talked about that in pregame with Coach Keeler. He said, we have got to hit them early and put them down early. And you couldn't have said it any better, Brian. Here are the Bearcats, trips to the right. Isaac Sly, the tight end, alongside Brennan Tibbs and Cody Crest to that right side. Schmidt all alone, five wide. Look for Schmidt to keep it here. I wouldn't be surprised, Brian. Schmidt will send Noah Smith in motion. Maybe the handoff to Smith. It is a handoff to Smith. Right side, Smith in, touchdown. Noah Smith from two yards out. And Noah Smith with his third touchdown of the season after he had one and a career day two weeks ago hosting Lamar. Yeah, Noah Smith in motion, gets the inside handoff, makes a cut right after the guard, runs it in. Nice play by that offense. That's taking advantage. Eric Smith looked a lot better on that drive than he did the previous two drives, hitting his targets. Looked like he's throwing the ball with confidence on that drive. Two yards for Noah Smith, and the Bearcats have the first lead of the afternoon as the sunshine starting to make its way back out there through the clouds. Here's Seth Morgan with the sunshine to his back. Ryan Humphreys the hold, the kick, and the Bearcats lead by seven. We'll take 30 seconds from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas for over 20 years. They do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. The ROTC getting busy in that Sam Houston end zone after every score. They go out there and do push-ups. They're now at 14. Just saw them a few moments ago. Appreciate the ROTC and all of our service, military service members who may be listening or joining us here in the booth. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your selfless sacrifice and protecting our freedoms. No question about it. Brian, 14 to 7, 6.52 to go. Bearcats finding a little bit of rhythm. As Eric Schmid, you talked about earlier how it was just kind of a slow start again for Schmid. He's been sidearming a lot of passes, but looking a little more focused on this last drive on the score. He did. He was uh, he was much more accurate on this last drive, and obviously it helped him out. He got him down and punched in. But, but earlier, I mean, he got off to a little bit of a rough start again. His game against Lamar was not the greatest. But, uh, you know, it looks like he's kind of finally shaking off that rust a little bit and zeroing in on his target. But what he has done well from the go is if he doesn't see a receiver downfield, he takes the ball and runs and picks up the first down. And that is his intangible that makes him so dangerous. Had a message come in in the booth on our Bearcat fan text line. Noah Smith, eat him up, Cat, saying they're watching live uh, the live booth broadcast. I don't want to get you get you feeling good, Brian. They said you two are awesome. Oh, so, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> we appreciate that. I don't like telling Brian that because, you know, no, I'm just kidding, Brian. Uh, but whoever that is, send us your name. We'd love to know who you are. Thanks for sending that in to us. And also, our friends from San Francisco joining. You guys have the rain to the south and east. Uh, going away from Bowers now. Eat them up, Cats. That is Tony Minton listening in from San Francisco. Thank you, Tony. Good to hear from you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. 6.52 to go on the Miller time. Game clock here in the second quarter. 14-7. Sam Houston taking the lead on that previous possession. It was a drive that started all the way back on their own 13-yard line. A couple of big plays, and then Noah Smith with a two-yard touchdown run, the biggest play 
was Ife a day on that catch, and he went all the way down and then got up into the two-yard line, but the Bearcats found a way to punch it in. They are so efficient in that red zone. And you got to be. I mean, you're number one team in the country. You're going to be efficient in the red zone, and Sam Houston certainly is. Coach Keeler was talking to me, and he said, we are the number one team in the country. We have to start playing like it. He doesn't feel that they have played at times like the number one team in the country. Well, you know what? They got weapons everywhere. I say it every week. Again, that defense is so nasty, and, man, they're so aggressive and fast. That's the thing. This overall team speed for Sam Houston is crazy, and they got it in every position. Cameron Hearn set to kick this one away. He will go from right to left with the wind behind his back. I would expect this to go into the end zone if he can get under it right. He'll look to the left, puts his right arm to the right. Hearn runs up to the ball. The kick from the 35, end over end. This one will drop, though, at the 2. It is fielded on the left side to the 10. Misses one defender to the 15 and out of bounds near the 20-yard line. So Cameron Hearn not able to punch that one in the back of the end zone. He normally can. Uh, but the return there, and it'll be fair field position starting out here for Jacksonville State as they will have it for the sixth time this afternoon, now trailing 14-7. to Well, Rob, as we talk about those ominous clouds, I see a couple of little raindrops hitting our windscreen in front of us here. I don't know if that's an indication there's going to be a little bit of rain or not. Jacksonville State from their own 20, moving from left to right. 6.48 to go on the Miller Time game clock. As Cooper will get his team back out on the field. Trips to the right, no one to the left. Sends his running back in motion. Passes to that back in the flats on the right side. Across the 20, angling his way, 25, and finally out of bounds. Around the 26-yard line, the ball carrier there on that play. Actually, I think it was Ahmad Edwards. No, it's actually Ron Wiggins. Yeah, Ron Wiggins, 5'11", 180 freshman out in the flats. Nice play. That's probably their best play they've had in several downs. It's a gain of seven, brings up second down and three. From their own 27, just atop the WAC logo on the right side. Cooper in the gun. Tight formation, two receivers to the right. He'll hand off here, his back is slammed to the ground. ball popped out. Flags will fly, and Jacksonville State was able to fall back on it. We'll see what those flags are. The ball popped out. Well, big Joseph Wallace, 95, just body slammed. Personal him. foul, face mask, uh, number 95 defense. 15-yard oh. penalty, automatic first down. Second big penalty of the game by Sam Houston. Yep, Joseph Wallace in on that tackle, call for the face mask. Big break there for Jacksonville State. The Sam Houston team in the whack. Number one scoring offense, number one scoring defense. They're second in touchdown scores, second in kicking, first in total offense. I mean, this team is one that you want to watch out for. But Jacksonville State trying to take care of it here. First and 10 from their own 43. Throw up. It's almost intercepted by McCollum. It danced on his fingertips, and Tristan McCollum was not able to haul it down for the interception. That would have been his first of the season. Instead, it's incomplete at the 45. Boy, Tristan McCollum would love to have that opportunity one more time. He goes up at the highest point and fails to bring it in. Hits him in both hands. Second down and 10 for J-State on the 43-yard line, trailing 14 to 7, 5.44 to go. Cooper pump fakes once, throws incomplete. As he had to throw it off the back of his heels, it's incomplete on the left side. He was looking for Ahmad Edwards, the sophomore out of Alabaster, Alabama. Boy, it's a big third down here for Jacksonville State. I mean, you got five minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half, and all the momentum is with the Bearcats at the moment. Jacksonville State only two of six on third down today. Third down and 10 from their own 43. Cooper stands on the 38. Right hash mark in the gun. Running back to his right. Trips to the left. Takes the snap. Looking to pass. He is eludes one sack. Now throws. This one is almost intercepted. Oh, one of the bigs almost got onto it there for Sam Houston. Sean Mutton Bustin Mustin almost had it. I knew, I knew you couldn't wait to say that. Oh, my goodness. Bustin, I don't think he was ready for it. And uh, he would have had his first interception. Instead, it falls harmlessly to the turf. And in any case, that defense coming up huge again because I believe it was a double nickel chasing him down back there. Almost a sack on the play by Sam Houston by Jahari K. And instead, it falls incomplete. Fourth down. Boy, Wes Ezard back again. Going to get another opportunity to take one to the house. 
Jack Dawson punts this one away. Ezard immediately calls for the catch, lets it bounce over his head, and it takes a roll back in favor of Sam Houston. Initially bounced at the 20 and then rolled forward to around the 23 or so. We'll go ahead and keep things right here. 14 to 7, Sam Houston leading. 5.25 to go on the Miller Time game clock here in the second quarter. Well, Eric Smith and company are going to come back out, and they're going to be methodical about this. They want to eat up that time that's left and try to punch one in right before halftime and keep this momentum going. Yeah, and keep in mind, Sam Houston received the opening kickoff, so they will not receive to start the second half. Seventh possession for Sam Houston and Eric Schmid. Here we go. First and 10 from his own 23. Schmid, handoff. Ramon Jefferson, spindle topping his way across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Oh, the oil wells are popping tonight. And Ramon, come on, Jefferson, gushed one forward to the 36. He is so much fun to watch. He is such a powerful runner. I mean, it takes two or three people to bring that young man down from the Bronx, New York. Two receivers to either side. The Bearcats on the right hash mark, first and 10 from their own 36. Schmidt again, handoff Jefferson to the left gap. Left hash mark, lunges forward, and he's got a Bearcat first down at the 47-yard line. I mean, he's running wild out there. The O-line is opening up some big holes for Jefferson to run through. Ramon Jefferson closing in with 78 yards on eight carries, a touchdown so far. He's averaging almost a first down on every grab. That is crazy. It's first and 10 from the 47. Schmid, Ezard drops it incomplete at the 49 on the left side of Jacksonville State. That is a rare drop by Ezard. Very rare drop by Ezard. I mean, the ball was kind of a behind him, but certainly catchable, and that is a rare drop by, by Ezard there. Brian Adams, were you voted most handsome back in high school? Do what? <laughs> I, just, I was just asking. I didn't know. <laughs> and off goes here, lunging forward. It's Kyron Action Jackson to the 50-yard line. Here's a joke text coming in. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know who sent that. <laughs> that is funny. Brian, the- Brian, I'll say the mo- most handsome in the broadcast booth. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> Third down. And seven coming up for Sam Houston at the 50. That ball is smack dab on the middle of the SH logo. Critical third down here for the Bearcats trying to convert. They are only three of seven today. Schmidt in the gun looking to pass. Throws over center, incomplete. Was that intercepted at the 30? A flag flies at the end, and I think Ezard was held. That's going to be pass interference, and the Bearcats may get a good call here. Yeah, they may get a break here. Ezard was going across the middle, and he called it himself. Oh, man, my good friend. Becky Martin Spice. Thank you, Becky. I appreciate that. <laughs> Here's the call. Pass interference, number 17 defense. All right. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. What a big break there for Sam Houston on that. And again, Eric Schmidt is just, man, that ball there was overthrown a little bit too. So that was Marco Baker. The oven a little too hot, and he committed the pass interference, and that gives Sam Houston a first down to the Jacksonville State 35. That's huge. Bearcats, 3.52 to go here in the second, leading 14-7. Tight formation in between the marks. Schmidt in the gun, claps twice, fakes the handoff. Still has it. Bounces into one of his own players. Still on his feet to the left side. Schmidt looking. He'll pass. Airs this one. Corner end zone. Way out of the reach of Ezard. As Ezard had it, but he was out of bounds. He flipped over the advertising sign. Eric Schmidt, though, looked like he was going to go down. Ran into the back of one of his own linemen. And we just had a lightning strike, Brian. I don't know if they saw it. Somebody should have seen that. There was a lightning strike over to our left side. Well, and we did yep. have a the officials are going to probably pause this. Let's see what happens. Nope. Boy, there was a lightning strike to our left. All right, they're lined up in a swinging gate formation. Yep, swinging gate. We're going to continue to play here. Second down and 10. Swinging gate it is. Is Schmidt. Now they will move over. Schmidt will send Noah Smith in motion. Flips it to Smith. Right side, Smith spinning around to the 30. He's well short of the first down up to the 30-yard line. Man, Rob, as these big O-linemen for Sam Houston walk back to the ball, they are huge. My goodness, these guys. 
I know that lightning, they do keep tabs on that, Brian, to see how far that lightning is. So even though we can see the bolt a few moments ago, it may have been too far away for concern right now. Third down and six for the Bearcats on the Jacksonville State 31. Right hash Schmidt, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Schmidt stepping back, throws. Right side, up. Did Cody Crest catch that? They say no, it's incomplete. Oh, man, that was a great pass and catch over on the far sideline by Crest, and they are waving him out of bounds, bringing up fourth down. Boy, that's unfortunate. Well, you're in the no man here from 31. It would be a 48-yard field goal. That is within Seth Morgan's range. Remember, he hit a 51-yarder earlier this season. And they have the wind at their back. But they're not going to do that. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and six. Yeah, why not? Chandler Harvin to the right side, who just checked in. Brennan Tibbs to the left. Harvin in motion. Action Jackson out there at the 35. Schmidt will roll to the left. He's being chased. Smith throws this one over left side. And that one is well incomplete. Just nowhere close to Brennan Tibbs. No, he's rolling to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback, so that makes it really difficult to throw across your body. Nobody open downfield. Turnover on downs. Tough break for Sam Houston. They had some momentum. They started on their own 23, and the drive stalls. They got a first down on a penalty. They were not able to capitalize. Boy, Ramon Jefferson on that last series of downs. Boy, he was running lights out. Every carry seemed like he was picking up a first down. You're right, Rob. To stall out right before half, unfortunately. Jacksonville State will start here on their own 30-yard line, trailing 14-7, to 2.55 to go. They've got all three of their timeouts remaining. Both teams have all three remaining. And here's Cooper leading his team onto the field. Here we go. Takes a high snap, keeps it 30, lowers his shoulder, and he's plowed backwards. Oh, Only a pickup of three up to the 33-yard line. He was trying to find more in the Bearcat. Orange Storm put up a wall and said, get it away from us, man. I know Cooper's a big guy, but let me tell you what, those are bigger guys on the other side of you, and he got drilled. It's second down and eight. From the 33, tight formation, left hash mark, Cooper in the gun at the 29. High snap, keeps it, wants to run, lunges forward, back to the original line of scrimmage. He may have even lost a yard. Well, Trace Mascaro, number 90, coming up along with Jahari K. Timeout, Sam Houston, their first. It's 30 seconds. So here's Sam Houston wisely taking a timeout here. As I've talked about, especially over the last couple of drives, the Bearcats. We'll have to kick to start the second half. And so they want to stop this and try to get another possession and get a little bit more separation. Seven points, not enough separation against this very talented Jacksonville State team. Yeah, you're right. Again, going back to what Casey Keeler said, I mean, this, uh, you know, you want to put this team, get them out. You know, you don't want them to hang around, have an opportunity as this game goes along. The timeout quickly comes and goes. Sam Houston back out there. Braden Clompton in the backfield alongside Tristan McCollum. Also Trey Fields, a lot of double numbers this season for Sam Houston, something we haven't seen. So here we go, it's third down and eight for Jacksonville State, and they're 33. Cooper in the gun, two receivers to the left. Bearcats wanting a false start, they didn't get it. They'll come in, bring pressure, it's intercepted by McCollum! Oh, Mama McCollum has it! To the left side, still on his feet! One to beat, 10, five, and he's finally down at the three yard line. What an interception on that play by Zion McCollum! Unbelievable! Well, there was a safety blitz on by Sam Houston, got it, Cooper's face! And three time out on the field. And he throws a pick to McCollum. He returns it almost all the way into the end zone. Zion McCollum with his second interception of the season. There is an injured Jacksonville State player down on the Bearcats sideline at the five yard line. Boy, these McCollum brothers are so entertaining to watch. I tell you, this defense for Sam Houston, man, I say it week in and week out, they are probably the best in all of FCS football, and we're seeing it again here this afternoon. The crowd is chanting Sam Houston. Man, you can feel the electricity out here right before halftime, and man, we've got a whale of a football game going on here. The injured Jacksonville State player 
able to walk off under his own power. That was Javarius, Javarius Hoskins. And with 2.06 to go on the Miller time game clock, the Bearcats will have it after the McCollum interception just moments ago. It's first down and goal from the nine. That was a great timeout called by Casey Keeler a while ago to give these Bearcats a little bit of time in case they were going to punt. But, man, it never got that far with McCollum stepping up and picking that ball off and bringing it all the way down to the two-yard line. Eric Schmidt will lead his team onto the field on the nine-yard line of Jacksonville State, leading 14-7, to 2.06 to go here in the first half. Schmidt in the gun, Noah Smith to his right. He's standing in the gun at the 14-yard line. Two receivers up top is a day in Cody Crest, a day in motion. Schmidt pitches on the option to Noah Smith. Smith breaks one tackle. Smith, five, spins his way down, ping-pong to the three-yard line. Noah Smith, what a run by that young man. Boy, he had a game last week, all-time record for Noah Smith. And, man, he is spinning out there and making tackles and just all kinds of stuff. Noah Smith, that was his second Rush of the afternoon, now 25 yards. Second down and goal from the three. As the sunshine starting to break through the clouds to the back of Eric Schmidt. Schmidt still in there as the running back. Two receivers down to the left. Schmidt looking here to the right side, trying to cut the angle, and he is drugged down around the neck. Oh, the fans are upset about that as he went down hard. Well, when you take off and run, that's a legitimate tackle, but it was close. Yeah, they were maybe wanting a horse collar call, but that was a legitimate tackle, as you just said. And once you take off, you are no longer the quarterback. You are a running back. That was down to the three-yard line, and we may have a timeout here. We'll see what the call is. Coach Keeler is waiting to hear from the officials. They're going to talk things over as referee Ryan Thornton talking things over with some of his crew around the 10-yard line on the left hash mark. Here it Please is. Please reset the game clock to 1 minute 20 seconds. one two, zero, and we'll start on the snap. So the clock was at 103. They've Thank reset you. it to 120. Eric Schmidt, 9 of 20, 100 yards through the air. It's been a rushing performance, though, by Sam Houston. 22 carries, 137 yards. Now an empty backfield here for Schmidt. Five wide from the four-yard line. It's third and goal from the four. In motion is Schmidt. He goes in. Touchdown, Eric Schmidt. He faked the handoff, took it in. Eric Schmidt for a four-yard touchdown run. Oh, that's that Bearcat football team for you right there. Noah Smith in motion. Eric Schmidt fakes his handoff. Cuts it right up, untouched. Well-designed play, Coach Ryan Carty, the offensive coordinator. Oh, he's a good one, too, isn't he? He knows how to dial him up, man. Boy, this Sam Houston football team is so exciting on all aspects of their game. Humphreys the hold, the kick by Morgan and the Bearcats. Leading 21 to 7. It is 21 unanswered points by Sam Houston with 117 to go here in the first half of play. We'll go ahead and keep things right here. The Bearcats, it was after the Zion McCollum interception, started on the Jacksonville State nine-yard line. Took a few plays to get in there, but finally Eric Schmidt, he faked the handoff to Noah Smith, took it in his cell from four yards out, the Bearcats 21-7. Yeah, Zarek Cooper, Jacksonville State quarterback, has got to figure a way out to move that team downfield against this very, very tough Bearcat defense, or this is going to be a long afternoon for him. Eighth possession of the afternoon coming up for Jacksonville State. Sam Houston. Again, 21 unanswered as they were down early, 7-0. You go back to the second possession for the Gamecocks. A try that started on their own 22 at the 7.44 mark in the first, took a 7-0 advantage. Bearcats have been able to respond again and again and again. And here is Cameron Hearn to kick this one away. 
as he will look to the left, looks to the right. On the right hash mark at the 35, kicks, and the ball is off. Swinging end over end, and this one will take a drop in the back of the end zone with a little bit of wind behind it. Jacksonville State will have it again for the eighth time, trailing 21 to seven from their own 25. Yeah, with a minute and 17 seconds left here in the first half, they have got a tall task in front of them, but they will get the ball back to open up this third quarter. So Sam Houston's defense needs to shut them down right here before half. Bearcat football made possible by our good friends at HEB. No store does more than mine, HEB. Here's Zarek Cooper leading his team back out. They will face the sunshine moving from left to right, favoring the left hash mark, trips down to the right, one to the left from his own 25. He'll step back around the 16, throws over center at the belt level of his receiver and was able to get that one up to the 40-yard line. Good grab there by Josh Shanduel. It's thrown right at his belt, and he caught it and ran it up to the 40. Yeah, nice little seam route. Nice first down, Jacksonville State. Hurry up offense here. Cooper in the gun, trips to the right. Looking, eludes one. Jahari K chasing him, has to throw this one away. He had two back there on him. Jahari K was leading the charge and avoiding the sack, he threw it away to the left side, out of bounds. Number five is in the area. Well, think about that. I mean, this front four for Sam Houston, Joseph Wallace, Jahari K, Javon Leon, and sometimes Trace Piscardo in there, and those guys are fast athletes. And, man, they got back on that quarterback quick. One of, well, now under a minute, 59 seconds to go for Jacksonville State, trailing 21 to 7, second and 10 from their own 40. Pass goes here to Ahmad Edwards. Edwards in between the hash marks and short of the first down to the 46 yard line. Has to get to the 50 and bring up third down and four. Yep, Tim Hart, linebacker for Sam Houston on that tackle. And Brian, here's something else to consider 46 seconds to go. It's another third down for Jacksonville State. Looks like they just took a timeout. Timeout, Jacksonville State. Their first, it's 30 seconds. Sam Please Houston. reset the game clock to 47 seconds. So put another second up there, seconds. 47 seconds. Sam Houston still has two timeouts Thank remaining. You. We'll see what happens here. This could get interesting. Would Keeler want to go for another one in the end zone with that little time remaining in the score they have? I don't know. Well, here's what I would think. It depends on what happens on this play here. If they can stop them here, force Jacksonville State to punt the football, then they can get it back in good, in, in good uh, territory, then I don't see why not go for more points. Good friend Joshua Harris joining us in the booth. Joshua, good to hear from you, buddy. It's third down and four for the Gamecocks. The Orange Storm putting everybody up front. That's a pretty big front set. Here's Cooper stepping back, throws over, connects. First down at the 46-yard line. Trevor Williams' helmet comes off. He's going to have to take a play off. Nice conversion there on third down there by Jacksonville State with 40. 41 seconds left in the first half, and they're trying to get some more plays off here. Now the Bearcats have stacked up eight of them up front. Damon Johnson with the first down. First down and 10 for Jacksonville State on the Bearcat 46. 26 seconds to go. Cooper throwing over center, has a man wide open, and he drops it at the end of the play, but the officials wave it incomplete. Really incomplete at the 20. Pass, second down. I don't know about that. It looked like he, I, oh, we don't have the camera, but it looked like he went a few steps and then dropped it. Well, it was a great pass by Cooper. I mean, it was up. It was a go route. He was wide open. And it looked to me like he had caught it and taken a couple steps and got drilled and lost it. But they did call it incomplete. Yeah, the tight end, Leeshawn Jarrett, incomplete at the 20. It's second down and 10. From the Bearcat 46, Jacksonville State trailing 21-7. 21 seconds to go in the first half of the Miller Time game clock. Cooper stepping back. Cooper, he's sacked, baby. He goes down at the 46-yard line. Rolling on the field is a and fumble. And it's Javon Leon. Oh, he fumbled it. And Houston. Javon Leon recovered it. Javon Leon. <laughs> Number 94. I mean, takes the quarterback down and recovers the fumble. What a play by Big 94. Brian, that's critical. 15 seconds to go, and the Bearcats will have it on the 46-yard line of Jacksonville State. Well, there you go. They're at a point here where they can go for it and put more points on the board. Why not? I didn't see that. I don't think the crowd saw it. Nobody saw it. Even the Bearcats didn't expect it until the last moment that it was a fumble recovery. Well, they got an opportunity with 15 seconds to run at least two plays. 
Here we go, it's Schmidt. Standing in the gun, two receivers to either side, steps back, Schmidt. Schmidt still on his feet, avoids a sack. Schmidt looking, trying to get out of bounds at the 40 and finally does with seven seconds to go. They'll call him out at the 41. Schmidt did a great job of avoiding a sack as a defender was draped on him. He was able to break through it. Lost his towel in the process. Well, they're going to keep Eric Schmidt out there. Yeah, from here, I mean, you're looking at you're looking at a 58-yard field goal. Well, you know what? They're going to run all wides all the way into the end zone and throw it up. Four wide trips to the right. One receiver down to the left. Schmidt stepping back, looking in the direction of Ezard. Schmidt still with it. Now throws. This one's caught, slipped down, and that will do it for the first half of play. It was a pass to Brennan Tibbs, complete at the 34. And wait a minute. They may put a little bit more time on here. Well, they sure thinking about it. Hold Look at on. this. Time had ran down. But the officials are talking things over. Keeler immediately went up to the officials and said, wait a minute, there was a second left. They're putting, the, they're spotting the ball on the 34-yard line. That would be a 51. Here, Here we, we go. go. Yep. Rolling on the field is a completed catch for a first down. Please put one second there on the game is. clock, and we'll start on the snap. Timeout, Sam Houston. Their second, it's 30 seconds. So keep in mind, Seth Morgan has a career long of 51. That is where it would be from here. That would tie his career long, and he's got a little bit of wind behind his back, and Seth Morgan is out there, Brian. Well, he is a talented kicker. We've talked about he's missed one already today, but he is a very talented young kicker. He's a freshman out of Klein Oak High School, and this kid can kick. And they're showing it as a 50-yarder. I thought it was from 51. It was from 50. That was at Southeastern Missouri. And so he will go out here to kick this one from 51. Seth Morgan and the Bearcats trying to extend the 21-7 lead. One second remaining here in the first half on the Miller Time game clock. With the wind at his back. So he ought to have the distance. Here's Seth Morgan what would officially be his longest field goal. And now we've got a whistle here and probably a timeout by... Timeout, Jacksonville, Jacksonville State. State. Their second, 30 seconds. Yeah, his longest field goal is 50 yards. That was at Southeastern Missouri, Southeast Missouri. So this would be a career long for Morgan from 51. And we know that he's got it because when he hit that 50 yarder, he had plenty behind it. Yeah, had plenty of leg. And what's amazing is his he's, he's a young guy, he's a freshman. And uh, to have the poise and the concentration he does, man, it's just incredible. Here we go again, Seth Morgan from 51 out. Humphreys will hold it at the 41. Morgan steps back, left hash mark, with the wind behind his back, the sun behind his back. From 51, Humphreys calls for it, the hole, the kick. It's got plenty of distance, and it was just to the right. In, not in there, no good for Seth Morgan. It looked like it had the distance, but it went a little bit wide to the right. Yeah, no, it had the distance. It would have cleared about three or four yards, but it was wide right. However, Bearcats go into the locker room up by two touchdowns, and man, what a first half. 21 to seven. Bearcats will head into the locker room after 21 unanswered points. We'll step aside, we'll take a break. Halftime coming up. Stay with us from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville, your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. 
At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full service meat case, home cooked barbecue in our deli and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Hi, this is Will Smith and I'm proud of our family business, but I'm also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration. And we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. City Hall Cafe, City of Huntsville, Community Service Credit Union, Conroe CVB, Crossing Moving and Storage, Dos Equis, and Whataburger. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest. Conveniently located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat Course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat Course in Huntsville. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, community is important to us. And as part of this community, we enjoy celebrating the successes of our student athletes, win or lose. Their hard work is worthy of celebration. I'm Greg Smith, owner of Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home. When a need arises, you can trust us to help you and your family celebrate a life well lived. We're Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas for over 20 years. They do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? 
Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Our Tech Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville, your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. This is the Bearcat Halftime Show. Here's Rob Hip and Brian Adams. Welcome back, friends, live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. 21 to 7 at halftime, 14 44 to go here in this halftime. Sam Houston taking care of business in the first half. 252 total yards, 107 through the air, 145 on the ground. They had 15 first downs. Those stats compared to only 136 total yards for the Gamecocks of. And uh, it's 107 pass yards, 29 rushing yards, and only six first downs. So Jacksonville State got their work cut out for them, Brian. Overall, a good first half for Sam Houston after going down 7 to nothing originally, 21 unanswered. Yeah, Sam Houston just lit it up there towards the end of the first half. And you're right, Jacksonville State's got to come out and figure out something. Cooper has got to get his offense going, and he's having a tough time. Again, he's going against, in my opinion, the best defense in all of FCS. So, you know, he's got – He's got quite a tall task. And think about this. You know, some of the big plays that have gone on with this defense, you know, the McCollum interception that brings it down and they, they punch it in for another touchdown. Uh, it's, it's things like that. But really what makes them tough, in my opinion, is that front four. I mean, you got Joseph Wallace, big 95. I mean, he is just a man amongst boys out there. And Jahari K and Javon Leon making that incredible play he did a while ago. I mean, that is what these teams go up against, and it is such a difficult task for them to overcome. We'll step aside. We'll take a break as we go behind the Bearcats. Stay with us. Halftime continues from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Join the Sam Houston State University Alumni Association. For only $35 a year, your membership helps provide scholarship assistance, plus networking, a travel program, discounts on home and auto insurance, car rentals, event tickets, and much more. Connect with your Bearcat pride and spirit by joining the Alumni Association. Go online, alumni.shsu.edu. As a member, you can be a part of something bigger. The Sam Houston State University Alumni Association. Join today. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted Best Butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas for over 20 years. They do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. There's more to a game than just the players on the field and the fans in the stands. Assistant coaches, interns, trainers, equipment managers, operations directors, the public address announcers, band members, and many others all play an important role to help make kickoff possible. These are their stories. This is Behind the Bearcats. Rob Hip here with another edition of Behind the Bearcats. Now joined today by my good friend and someone that is very important to this program, the digital content manager, officially Sheridan McGrew. Sheridan, what's up, man? How's it going, Rob? Thanks for having me on. Hey, you bet. And I said officially the digital content manager because it's so much more than that. <laughs> and you're behind the scenes, and, and this program is all about those that work behind the scenes. And when you talk about behind the scenes, you are the man behind the scenes. Tell us a little bit more just to, about how you got into 
not only digital content, but you're behind the scenes with a lot of the video and those things that happen. Just kind of guide us through that process. How did you get to where you're at today, man? So I started at Sam as a student. Um, you know, every student is like, hey, I need a job. So after a couple of years of kind of, all right, hey, if I can just, just be quiet, nobody has to see anything. I just keep on moving. And finally, two years in, I said, you know what? Let me apply for this position. I applied. Jason Barfield, uh, my supervisor, he hired me on the spot. He's like, you want the job? Sure. Uh, so I started off just running cameras and just kind of as things progressed, I took on a few more things uh, or did a few more organizational things. And then today I oversee a lot of things and I'm just like, how did I get here? It's been a progression over the last... I think I'm starting my eighth year with athletics. Uh, don't say that out loud because it makes me feel a little bit old. <laughs> it's been a progression of sorts. Every year we've kind of just done more and I've added more and I'm just like, all right, here we are. We are year eight. Let's keep this thing rolling. Well, we talked to Jason a couple of weeks ago on Behind the Bearcats and just as Jason, you're also an alum here mm -hmm. of Sam Houston. What have you seen in this university over your tenure here, not just through your job, but going to school here and now where things are at with multimedia and video what are some of the most exciting things and changes that you've seen over the past eight, nine years? Uh, a ton of growth. I'll say that um, this university, it looks, uh, it's always funny uh, hearing other people say, oh, you know, so much has changed or so much has grown. And I'm like, now I have seen it all grow. And I'm just like, wow, this has been a lot of growth, a lot of change. From the program itself, media has changed. Uh, so when I started, you know, there were just a few tracks and hey, you're going to either do this or that. And now it's, you know, multimedia. How can you you kind of covered it all, if you would say. Sheridan, talk a little bit about that from what happens in production room up at the stadium and how it translates to what people see on game day on television. So actually, this production room had never existed within over the last few years. Obviously, it's gotten built out. But when I initially started, that room was a storage closet. We stored drinks and snacks and just storage type things. Part of uh, whenever we got our new board built in, then obviously, you know, there were more master plans. So, hey, let's create this as a production room so that we can do our IMAX show, do replays, things like that from that room. So if you come to game day, you'll see on the video board, you're just like, oh, there's, you know, it's a video board show. And that all used to take place from that room. Now we've expanded even more since then. And we have a central control room on campus. And that's where we do our ESPN broadcast for football, soccer, baseball, and softball. And then those feeds just come back and then we're able to see it on the big screen. So that room serves now just for an IMAG and just kind of a bridge the gap. I'm glad you mentioned those other sports because of course this is a football broadcast but you oversee so much more than just football. What, 13 total sports if I'm not mistaken at Sam Houston and most of those on video? Yes, we'll go with 13. <laughs> uh, I really should know the, the true number that uh, we provide coverage to but I always joke I'm like one of these days I'll count it all up to see how many of the sports that we actually uh, provide coverage to but for as far as like a true broadcast obviously football baseball, softball, soccer men's and women's basketball and volleyball. Um, those do get our ESPN level productions. Just over the last few years, we've done there. there is a noticeable difference from when we first started to now and uh, many years ago, I always joke with Jason that I said, as long as we don't do football, I'll stay around. And then this past spring, we took on football and I was just like, oh my gosh, we'll never be able to do this. And now I'm like, alright, hey, it's game week. Alright, hey, we got our production ready. Alright, let's get it done. Alright, let's go football. We're talking to Sheridan McGrew, digital content manager of Sam Houston State. Sheridan, all that magic behind the scenes, you've got to have a support cast behind you. How do you find people to run those cameras, to mix the video, to do the audio things? How does all that come into play? Thank God for our students. I did. I started as a student, so I always like tell people when they're looking for jobs, when they start working here or when they're interviewing, I'm like, hey, I started in that same seat that you're in. It's a different building, of course, but I started in the same seat. Uh, unfortunately, and just as times have changed, uh, people have a true passion for sports and video production so it's kind of like a nice little mesh the Bearcat Sports Network we do have 25 students on our payroll now but it's truly the mass communication department Jonathan Reed he is over the sports minor now with him we work with I think that's maybe another 60 to 75 students so between the mass communication the athletic piece we kind of all mix together so that's how we're able to do our cameras our replays our directing everything production wise all by our students and and truly, truly, I cannot do it without them. Sheridan, you made a comment earlier before.
before we went on, you were talking about, when I was talking about behind the scenes, you said, if you're on your TV screen and you look just to the right of your TV, that's where I'm at. I can sense the joy in your job. You're a pleasant guy to be around. Always love your energy. That translates to what happens here with this university and with the coverage that you guys have. What has been maybe one of the most enjoyable moments or something that you really enjoy about what you get to do every day? Oh, God, that's always a tough question. I do enjoy my job. Uh, it can get stressful at times, but we always joke that at the end of the day, the game will start and the game will finish. Somebody will win, somebody will lose. Hopefully we won. Makes it even more enjoyable, but uh, I truly enjoy my job. But the most enjoyable part is just kind of seeing the students being able to take ownership of what they're doing. I can prep all week and I do I prep for the games, but at the end of the day, when I hand over the papers, all right, here's our game plan, here's our script, if you will, for today's show. And to be able to see it on the big screen, to see it on the phone screens, to see it on the computer screens, hey, this looks great. You guys all took something from it. You all learned. You're getting better as the weeks go. It's what fills me, because I'm just like, all right, they got it. All right, we're on to the next one. All right, guys, keep it up, and let's do it again next week. So that's really just seeing, I mean, it sounds cliche, but just seeing the others get it, I'm like, all right, they got it. We're good. Sheridan, final question. The university continues to grow. You've seen the growth as a student here and now has been involved in working here for many years. What would you like to see continue to happen with multimedia and the way you guys are doing things? What is a dream of yours that you have with the university? Um, I think just honestly seeing kind of what we do as a program continue to grow. I follow a lot of other schools on social media. So just kind of seeing what they do and how they do and just kind of elevating us to another level. We've done this now for about five or six years. And so just kind of seeing how we can continue to grow, how we can do more with the production. How can we get more cameras? How can we get more replays? How can we get more creative content? How can we storytell it better? And how can we just make sure that, hey, when everybody comes to the game or if they're watching at home, they're just like, Wow, whatever they're doing at that school, it's amazing. Awesome. Well, Sheridan, appreciate you, all the great work that you and your staff does behind the scenes here on Behind the Bearcats. That's why we had you today. Thank you so much, Sheridan. Thank you, Rob, so much. This will wrap up Behind the Bearcats. When we come back, more halftime from Ben Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. The Bearcat Pavilion at Bower Stadium is a new and exciting place to enjoy Bearcat football. Fans will find Smokin' Sammy's Barbecue, sodas, beer and wine, and a number of other food options from atop the southwest corner overlooking all of the action at Bower Stadium. Bearcat Pavilion can be reserved on game days for pregame and or postgame private functions and may also be reserved for private events throughout the year. For more information about Bearcat Pavilion at Bower Stadium, call 936-294-2701. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. Hometown proud, Bearcat strong. Back to the game on 101.7 KSAM. All right, friends, that'll wrap up halftime here from Huntsville, Texas at Bauer Stadium. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams, 21-7, 225 to go before we get things going in the third quarter. Great to hear from Sheridan McGrew on Behind the Bearcats. He does such a great job behind the scenes with a lot of the video production that you'll see if you're watching the games on ESPN Plus and a Bearcat Sports Network. One reason I have that show, Brian, I just love to learn. And, and, and for those that, you know, maybe you never hear of them or you don't, you don't see or hear what they do, you get a chance to kind of look behind the scenes. Yeah, you know what? And they do such a great job. And they, they, they're they so helpful for, for us. I mean, they're, they're willing to help us. And, and uh, you know, Sheridan and, and Ben Reichert and, of course, you know, Jason, man, without them, man, our jobs would be super difficult. But, yeah, it's I love that segment. I love to hear about what goes on behind the scenes. And, and uh, man, it's uh, great stuff. So this one, Ramon Jefferson got things started for Sam Houston in this ball game. You go back, the Bearcats were trailing 7-0. to zero. That was at the 744 mark back in the first half. Ramon Jefferson on the fourth possession for Sam Houston finally got things going on that 33-yard touchdown run. And I don't know if I have that, Brian. <laughs> so uh, never mind, Brian. But that's what happened, you know. So uh, hold on, give me one second. We do we do some of this here while we're here, of course, at the stadium. So here's Ramon Jefferson on that 33 yard. Schmidt claps 
for it once, gets it on the second clap. Delayed handoff, Jefferson, ping pong, left side, 20, 15, 10, 5, Ramon, come on, Jefferson, 33 yards, and that's a Bearcat touchdown. What a play, what blocking them. And by the way, Ramon Jefferson getting close to 100 yards. We continue to go through. Jahari K had a big sack in this ball game. And then Noah Smith also had a touchdown run picking up on his career day where he left off uh, two weeks ago. He had over 100 yards in this ball game. Hasn't picked up a lot of yards, but he has been a factor. Here is Noah Smith back in that first half. Schmid will send Noah Smith in motion. Maybe the handoff to Smith. It is a handoff to Smith. Right side, Smith in, touchdown. Noah Smith from two yards out. And Noah Smith with his third touchdown of the season after he had one and a career day two weeks ago hosting Lamar. Yeah, Noah Smith in motion. Of course, Noah Smith was in motion on that carry. And then finally, for the third and final touchdown in that first half, Eric Schmidt had a four-yard touchdown run. Five wide from the four-yard line. It's third and goal from the four. In motion is Schmidt. He goes in. Touchdown, Eric Schmidt. He faked the handoff, took it in. Eric Schmidt for a four-yard touchdown run. Oh, that's that Bearcat football team for you right there. Brian, you talk about it, that Bearcat football team for you right there, 21 to seven, taking care of business, this third quarter about to get underway. Yeah, Jacksonville State needs to turn it around quick if they're gonna stay in this ball game, but man, they're up against a nasty defense in Sam Houston, and uh, and all that momentum that they carried in before halftime, the defense is gonna come back out, and if Cooper doesn't have a good start to this second half, man, it's gonna be a long afternoon for them. I don't think I got to mention this earlier. We talked about Jacksonville State and them playing FBS opponents. They have two wins versus FBS opponents in two seasons, four total since 2010. Florida State, FIU, Georgia State, and Ole Miss. Those are some pretty good quality programs. This program here in the FCS has been able to find victories against. Cameron Hearn set to kick this one off for the Bearcats as he will go from right to left, the sunshine to his back. Yep, it looks like those uh, rain clouds are gone, and we got plenty of sunshine out here at Bower Stadium. Hearn looks to the left, looks to the right, runs up to the ball. The kick from the 35 is on its way, end over end, and this one will sell into the end zone, a second consecutive end zone kick for Cameron Hearn, and we are underway in the third quarter here in Huntsville, Texas. Yeah, Jacksonville State's going to get the ball on the 25-yard line to start the second half. And, man, there's that big front four for Sam Houston walking out there, headed by Joseph Wallace, Trace Mascaro, Javon Leon, and Jahari K. Those guys are just trouble for everybody they face. So here we go. Zarek Cooper, the quarterback, into the sunshine from left to right. Most of the clouds have cleared for the time being. The rain split us. It's first and 10, rolls to the right side, looking, throws up, almost intercepted on the play. And it's incomplete at the 40-yard line with the hand up, and that area was Jalen Thomas, and it's incomplete. Boy, Thomas almost got him a pick from the first play in this second half. If he'd have got up another couple of inches, he'd have brought that one home. I'm still waiting for that official Brian pick six. Pick six. That's my favorite call from <laughs> BA over here. <laughs> Bring up second down and 10 for Jacksonville State. Left hash mark their own 25. Handoff goes to the back. He finds a little daylight as he scampers through two defenders. Finally brought down by Tristan McCollum all the way up to the 47-yard line. Great run on that play there just a few moments ago. Oh, that was right up the middle too, Rob. I mean, he broke through several tackles, picks up a big first down. They're starting off the second half like they need to. It's first down and 10 for Jacksonville State on their own 47. Trailing 21 to 7, 14.30 to go on the Miller time game clock in the third. Cooper here, hands off to his back, Josh Samuel. Samuel stopped in the backfield. They're gonna roll it back to the original line of scrimmage. Isaiah Downs making an angle and dropped him right back at the original line. What a great tackle by Isaiah Downs. He got a nasty stiff arm, but was able to hang on to drop the running back. Man, what a great tackle. David Filial Johnson will line up as a receiver to the right alongside Ahmad Edwards. Nobody up top to the left for Jacksonville State. It's second down and 10 from their own 47. Trailing 21 to seven. Zarek Cooper, the quarterback in motion now is Ahmad Edwards. Handoff goes here. 
Well, that looked like a broken play there by Jacksonville State. You got Cooper tried to hand the ball off, and the running back wasn't ready for it. He had to take it himself and only picked up a yard. Yep, Cooper got it up for only just a yard to the 48-yard line. It's third down and nine. The Bearcat, Orange Storm trying to hold them. Three for nine today on third downs for Jacksonville State. Cooper in the gun on the left hash mark. Two receivers to either side. High snap holds it at the 40. Throws over center. Leaps caught. First down at the 35. Boy, what a catch on that play as he threw it. An absolute strike to Ahmad Edwards. Boy, Edwards was running a seam route, and Cooper, give him credit. I mean, we're talking third and nine. Big pressure down and drills him right in stride. First down and 10 from the 36. The Gamecocks trying to answer the 21 points unanswered by earlier by Sam Houston up 21 to seven. Cooper handoff goes to his back Samuel as he bounces around and nowhere to go on the left side in between the marks of the numbers. No gain, second down. Yeah, just a handoff off to the left side, number 90, Trace Moscato there on the tackle for Sam Houston. Great play there by the that defense. 12.32 to go on the Miller time game clock here in the third, 21 to seven. Sam Houston with the advantage. Cooper now with one back to either side. Tight formation favoring the left hash mark. High snap, fake the handoff. He'll keep it on the option, lowers his shoulder to the 30. They're gonna mark him down at the 31 yard line on the right hash. Looks like Trace Moscardo, number 90, getting up awful slow after that play. Still on one knee out in the middle of the field. Hopefully just a minor thing there for Trace Mascaro. He is such an integral part of this team. The transfer from years ago at UTEP from Imperial High School, and he does walk off under his own power. That's a good sign. Coach Keeler immediately ran out there because he knows how important all of his kids are, especially Trace. Well, and Trace is such a good guy. His younger brother, Cito, man, they're just such good people. All of these athletes for Sam Houston, just wonderful, wonderful young men. Third down and five. The Orange Storm trying to stop them. They got a first down on third and 10 earlier. From the 31 of Sam Houston, Jacksonville State's Cooper has it in between the hash marks. One receiver to either side has his back to the right side. As Cooper will step up, talks things over with his line. The running back is Uriah West to his right. Cooper calls for it once, trying to draw Sam off sides. Plenty of time on the game clock. Now he'll send a man in motion. High snap, passes in the flats, not ready for it. The communication was not there at all to Uriah West. He threw it over his head. West didn't even turn around on the right side. It's incomplete. Well, that's on West because there was an all-out blitz by Sam Houston, and when you see that, you've got to be the hot route. He never was looking for the football, and Cooper threw it right at him. Big play there by Sam Houston. Hot route was stopped by the cold front. It's fourth down and five. Jacksonville State gonna go for it here. From the Bearcat 31. Triplets to the right. Cooper looking to pass. Pump fakes over center. Has a man. Has the first down at the 20 to the 15. And finally out of bounds on that play. To the Boy. right side as Jalen Thomas drug him out. Well, that's two big plays by Cooper. I mean, that was a fourth down. And he picks up the first, and they converted a third down a while ago. Jacksonville State is on the march. They have converted it on fourth down, their first fourth down conversion here in this ball game. In fact, the first time they went for it on first down. It's first and 10 on the red zone now at the 16. On the right hash mark, Cooper, one back to either side, two receivers up top. He'll pass over center, it's dropped. It was just behind his intended receiver, Ahmad Edwards, dropped it in between the marks at the five, brings up second down. Yeah, you're right, that ball was thrown a little bit behind him and on his hip, very difficult pass for a receiver when he's running the opposite direction. Raya West, the running back, it's part of two backs, back there behind him, Josh Samuel to the right side, West to the left. Two receivers, tight formation to the right, one up top to the left on the left hash mark. It's second and 10 from the 16. Keeper here by Cooper, he had to pay for it. Boy, he did pay for he it. He got it up to the 11-yard line, a five-yard gain, but he paid for it on that right hash. Boy, it looked like Zion McCollum came up from his safety spot 
and just tattooed him. Looked like a little extracurricular activities, too. Tatum Blaylock had a few words with him. Another third down. They have converted both of them. Well, they didn't convert one previously, but they converted fourth down. Trying to move the chains again here. It's third down and five from the 11-yard line of Sam Houston. Cooper in the gun. Sends a man in motion. Johnson keeps it here. Lunges forward, and he's well short of the first down to the 10-yard line. It's only a gain of one. Boy, Cooper stretched his arm out as far as he could to try to pick up another couple of yards. But great play by that front four of Sam Houston to, to beat that O-line. Big Joe Wallace back out there for Sam Houston. Mascaro went back into the game. He's okay. He comes back to the sidelines on this play, though. That's a good sign. And now Jacksonville State will go for the field goal. The ball on the 11-yard line makes it a 28-yard field goal attempt here by Alan Karajic. He is 0-for-1 from this distance this season. Up on its way. It's to the left. He's now 0-for-2. Wow. No good for Karajic from 28 yards. Man alive. He pulls it to the left. And that is unfortunate for Jacksonville State because they had a great drive going and come up empty. With 9.39 to go in the third, 21 to seven, Bearcats will have it when we come back in 90 seconds from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. We're back live from the Dosa Equis broadcast booth. 9.39 remaining on the Miller Time game clock here in the third. Thanks for joining us from Huntsville, Texas in the 200th game in the history of Bowers Stadium. Bearcats leading 21-7 for Jacksonville State, a drive that started on their own 25. They end up taking it down the field, a 28-yard field goal. No good by Alan Karachik. He's also a freshman. And we remain 21 to seven. Sam Houston's gonna get the ball on their first possession of the second half. On the left hash mark on the 20 yard line, going 80 yards the other direction. And Eric Smith coming back out. Let's see if this offense can keep that momentum up they had right before halftime. Well, here is Eric Schmidt. He will lead his team back out onto the field. It's first and 10 from his own 20, the 10th possession of the afternoon. The first possession of the second half, moving with the sunshine to his back with the wind now blistering out there from right to left. A handoff here. No, it's a keeper. Schmidt has it across the 30. He's got nine yards. They're going to call him down at the 29. And I said blistering. It's not blistering out there. The wind is just blowing pretty heavily. Yeah, oh, the wind is blowing. Definitely pretty, not cold. No, it's not cold by any means. It's going to be a little humid out there probably. But Eric Schmidt fakes a handoff, takes it himself, makes a nice spin move, picks up nine yards on the first play from the line of scrimmage. Second down and one for the Cats from the 29 in the left hash mark. Leading 21-7. to seven. Schmidt in the gun. Sweeps it. No, fakes the sweep. Now a screen. He'll pass it over to the left side. And it is Noah Smith. On a design screen play across the 32 up to the 34-yard line, it's enough for a Bearcat first down. Boy, Eric Schmidt took a shot there on that screen pass. Barely got it off before he got drilled. Noah Smith picks up 
the first down, but man, Eric Smith took a shot. Kyron Jackson was in temporarily. He comes back to the sideline. First and 10 for the Cats on their own. 34, Schmidt claps for it, steps back in the gun at the 25. Protection's there. Heaves this one over center. This one caught by Ife Ade. Ade on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown. Ife Ade. Oh, baby, what a strike to Ife. What a great pass by Eric Smith and a great catch by Ife Dei, and the run after the catch was even better. Touchdown, Sam Houston. A day looked like he was going to go down. He broke through a defender around the 30-yard line on the right side, and the Bearcats put more insurance on the board, leading 27-7 with 8.47 to go in the third on the Miller Time game clock. That is a statement passed by Eric Smith in this Sam Houston offense to start this second half. 66 yards, and here is Seth Morgan. The hold, the snap, the kick on its way, and good. And the Bearcats, 28 unanswered, going back to the first quarter. 8.47 to go. We've got a good one here in Huntsville. Stay with us. We'll be back in 90 seconds from Ben Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Vic Ford in Huntsville. Your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest, conveniently Located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat course in Huntsville. Back at it, friends, from the Dos Equis broadcast booth moments ago. Ife Day, the star of the national championship with a 10-yard grab in that game to give the Bearcats their first ever FCS national championship, now has his longest reception of the season, 66 yards from Eric Schmidt and the Bearcats leading 28-7 with 8.47 to go on the Miller Time game clock here in the third. It was a great pass by Eric Schmidt going with the wind, so you can't just air it out with everything you have. You gotta have a little touch on it. He stepped up in the pocket, released it perfectly right into Dayee's hands. A day taking care of it here. And boy, you talk about a great guy. You remember we ran into them after the Central Arkansas game there the store, and man, he talked to us for about 10 minutes. Just a great guy. What a character. What a super athlete. Cameron Hearn set to kick it away here in just a few moments. Two back to receive with the sunshine and the wind in their face for Jacksonville State. Hearn will look to the left, puts a right up arm, runs up to the 35, swings his right leg, the kick on the way, end over end, and for the third time in a row, it's another one that's boomed into the end zone. Jacksonville State, man, this is critical time for them. They're going to get the ball on the 25-yard line. They had a great drive going a while ago, the previous drive, and they failed to come up on a 28-yard field goal attempt. And man, oh man, this defense is just going to make it tougher and tougher. Zion McCollum back there as the defensive back. KB and Gaither also back there behind him. As Gaither is all the way in the back around the 35. It is first down and 10 for Jacksonville State from their own 25. Left hash mark favoring that side. Cooper, the quarterback, in the gun, one back to either side. He will hand off 
to Uriah West, and West picks up six yards on the left side to the 31-yard line. Yeah, West picks up six. Jahari K double nickel in on the stop. Along with Sam Houston's KV on Gaither, defensive back six foot, also in on the tackle. Hurry up offense, four up top, pass in the flats, goes on the left side. That ball pops out at the end, and we'll see Sam Houston may have fell on it. I believe the Bearcats, they've recovered it. It's the second fumble recovery of the afternoon, and the Bearcats coming alive here in the third. Well, that ball's thrown out the flats. It's caught by Jacksonville State. Sam Houston lays a big lick, jarring that ball loose, and they recover. Sam Houston has the ball in great field position. Trying to see who that was on the fumble recovery. The Bearcats are taking care of business today on turnovers. Boy, Sam Houston's got the ball on their own. Jacksonville 32-yard line. Man, what a great play. The Bearcats with the sun to their back, the wind in their favor. On the right hash mark, Schmid with one back to either side, tight formation on the right side. Ron Wiggins was the one who recovered it. Here is the handoff on that right side up to the 31 yard line. Our fumble was by Ron Wiggins and uh, still not sure who recovered it, Brian. Run there though goes up for about three yards, brings up second down and seven. Well, right now we got a new quarterback in the ball game. Looks like you got Trapper Panel in there under. Yep, Trapper Panel is in there now for Sam Houston. Trapper Panel, the freshman out of Kerrville, Tyvee. Has it on the right side, high snap. Handoff, it's a direct snap actually. That's why it looked high and the running back has a first down to the 21 yard line. It's Noah Smith. Thought for a moment it was a high snap as Trapper Panner sold that one great. Yes, he did. Noah Smith takes the direct snap, number six, up the middle, picks up the first down. Great, great play there by Sam Houston. Trapper Panel on the season, nine for 98. Eric Smith on the ground. coming back in the game for Trapper Panel. He'll go out. Yeah, Panel has still not thrown the ball this season. Nine rushes for 98 yards. He has two touchdowns. But here is Eric Schmidt, who's back in. Two receivers to the left from the 21. Schmidt looking to pass. Right side. Has it. Ezard. Shake and bake. Ricky Bobby. Touchdown. Oh, mama, what a play. And Jaquez. Showtime, Ezard. From 12 out. And the Bearcats putting on the insurance policy now. Boy, that is a highlight waiting to happen. I mean, what a nasty move. The catch, the move after the catch, and he just walks into the end zone. I mean, that man is incredible. 21 yards, Ezard, for the touchdown. It is 34 to 7, and Sam Houston continuing the domination here to start this second half. Seth Morgan set for the extra point try, the snap, the hold, the kick, it's good. And the Bearcats leading 35 to seven here in Huntsville, Texas, under the sunshine. We'll step aside, we'll take two minutes from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Hi, this is Will Smith, and I'm proud of our family business, but I'm also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration, and we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas for over 20 years. They do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted Signs and Lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Artex Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. Hi there, this is Glenn Edwards. Allow me to share the Wiesner experience with you. You know, what's that, you might say? Well, the Wiesner experience is being treated like family when you're buying a new car or truck. 
The Wiesner Experience is when your expectations are not only met, but they are exceeded. The Wiesner Experience is why customers go back year after year for all of their vehicle needs. Now, I've had the Wiesner Experience both in the showroom and in the service department, and I know I will again. And you can too. So go have your own Wiesner Experience. You'll be glad you did. That's Wiesner of Huntsville. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. Back at it live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. 7.08 to go on the Miller Time game clock. A drive for Sam Houston to start it on the Jacksonville State 32 after the fumble recovery by the Sam Houston defense capped off by a 21-yard touchdown pass from Eric Schmid to Jaquez. Showtime Ezard and the Bearcats leading 35-7. Cameron Hearn will have to ice his foot tonight. He has been busy as he will look to the left, to the right, swings his right leg. This one will not sell into the end zone. It is fielded on the left side at the one. Across the 10 to the 15, spinning around and down just outside the 20-yard line. Gonna have to ice that toe, man. Do you ever ice your toe, Brian? Well, I hadn't had to ever ice my toe, but you know Cameron <laughs> Hearn's gonna have to. You're right, he's been out there all afternoon kicking the ball, kicking well. You know, the thing about Matt McRobert, he has had, he had a great first half, but this offense for Sam Houston has been lighting it up, and we hadn't seen our Australian punter since then. He's had a couple of punts. He had that big one that was at the two-yard line yeah. that allowed Sam Houston to get a touchdown. Starting in great field position. So here we go for Jacksonville State on their own 21-yard line. On the left hash mark, they're moving into the sunshine, into the wind from left to right. In their white jerseys, the pants in red, the helmets in red. Sam Houston showing a little bit of pressure up front with four there. The handoff goes and the oh, Bearcats. Oh, oh. oh, you're not gonna run against <laughs> these Bearcats. He was stopped for a loss in the backfield and coming up, making that grab was Tristan McCollum. Oh my goodness. Zion hey, McCollum. Zion McCollum comes up from his safety spot and just, I mean, absolutely drops that running back for about a three yard loss. They'll officially mark it as a three yard loss. Second down and 13 for Jacksonville State on their own 18 on the left hash. Trips to the right, nobody to the left. Four remain up front for Sam Houston. Cooper sends a man in motion, looking to pass here. Backed up to the eight, to the seven. Throws right shoulder, incomplete. The chase was on. He had nowhere to go, and a great job by Sean Button. Bustin Mustin, bringing him some pressure. Boys, you know what, big 92, Sean Mustin, he, that man is fast. I tell you what, he ran down a running back one time who had about a 15-yard head start on him. That big man can run. It's third down for Jacksonville State. They are four of 12. They did have a couple on their previous possession. Third and 13 from the 18. Trips down, or two receivers to either side. Cooper looking, throws over center. Has a man wide open, it's Josh Samuel. And Samuel is stopped well short of the first down at the 27 yard line. Yeah, middle screen right up the middle. They pick up a few yards, but uh, brings up fourth down. Gonna have to punt the ball away. Again, Sam Houston's gonna get the ball back in great field position here momentarily. Cody Crest is set back to receive this punt. Normally we see Ezard back there. Cody Crest will be out there for the first time tonight. It's Jack Dawson set to punt this one away. He will stand on his own 13. I would expect a short punt here with that wind blowing the way it is. We can see the flags to our left. Here is the punt. This one is a short punt. Crest will run right into it at the 40. Crest to the 50 on the right side. 40. And Crest finally out of bounds around the 37-yard line. It's a great return for Sam Houston's Cody Crest. What a return by Cody Crest. I mean, he takes the ball on the full sprint and picks up about 20 yards on the return. we got a player down for Jacksonville State on the far side. Yep, there is a player being tended to out there on the right side of the field near his own sideline around the 40-yard line. 
and we may have an extended time out here. We'll go ahead. We'll take 30 seconds for now. We may stretch it to a 60. Stay with us from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Curious about what real estate agents enjoy the most? It's about reminding our clients that dreams really do come true. Remax is the number one real estate company nationwide. Remax Prime Properties is a locally owned family business in Huntsville. Need a realtor knowledgeable in our area? Call one of our experienced agents and let us guide you home. Remax Prime Properties is located at 1215 Financial Plaza, Huntsville, Texas, and is a proud partner of SHSU Athletics. Eat them up, cats. Back at it, friends. Rob Hip, Ryan Adams, that injured player for Jacksonville State, able to walk off under his own power. That was a good thing there for those guys. Brian Carroll joining us. Also, Jacob Lenny listening from Portland, Texas, saying eat them up, Cats. Tim Owen listening from Arlington, Texas. And then uh, just a little bit earlier, Nikki McRobert, our statistician from all the way, our historian all the way from Australia. It's our new honorary position. We appreciate you, Nikki. 73-yard punt from Matt earlier in this game. He was one yard short of the school record of 74 yards. We appreciate that, Nikki. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Well, that's incredible. Appreciate Tim Owen out there listening and watching. Uh, grew up with Tim. Appreciate that. Here we go for Sam Houston. They will start this drive the 12th of the night on the Jacksonville 38 as Schmid. Uh, we'll find Noah Smith as he stutter steps to the defender to the left side, does his own dancing moves, and gets it to the 25-yard line on the left side. Noah Smith runs his route out in the flats. Eric Smith hits him in stride and a couple of good moves and another first down by this Bearcat and offense. And look at this. Hurry up offense for Sam Houston. Schmidt in the gun, two receivers down to the left, one up top to the right. Noah Smith the back to the left side. Now they'll slow things back. Schmidt will clap twice, fakes the handoff, goes over to Showtime Ezard. Across the 20, down to the 15, and he's plowed out of bounds. It's close to a first down. They're going to give Jaquez nine yards. They'll call him out at the 16-yard line. Nice little hitch route. Ezard is down here in the far wide out position, takes a couple of moves, man. It's just one move away, and that guy can go all the way. Two receivers to either side, ball on the left hash mark, second down on a short one from the 16. Smith in motion. Schmid looking, passes Ezard. This time, not able to move around the defenders, uh, but they're going to give him the fourth progress for the first down at the nine-yard line. Wow. Yeah, he caught it. They gave him forward progress, and that's enough for a Bearcat first down. Nice pass there by Eric Schmid. I mean, fires a missile over oh. the Oh, wait a minute, Brian. <laughs> they said they did move it back. I was about to say that was a generous spot. Yeah, so that does bring up third down. Yeah, they're actually going to give him a loss. They gave him the uh, initial line judge gave him three yards. Well, now they give him a one-yard loss. It's third down and two. Backed up to the 17-yard line. Schmidt in the gun. Ramon Jefferson in the back. The handoff. Jefferson, he meets a brick wall and had nowhere to go, maybe gained one or so. Yeah, that was kind of a crazy formation they changed into, and they hand the ball off right up the middle. And you're right, he ran into several Jacksonville defenders. Ife Day was having a talk with the officials on the right side. He felt that he was held. Well, it's fourth down and one. Go for it here. Why not? Schmidt all alone in the backfield, two receivers to either side. Ife Day, Harvin up to the right. Creston Jefferson to the left. Jefferson will go into motion. Now lines up is a back behind Eric Schmidt to the right. Handoff, Jefferson. Zigzag, first down. Jefferson still on his feet. Keep those big wheels turning, baby, to the 10-yard line. Boy, he is such a tough run. He's such a balanced runner. I mean, he runs up there. He makes a sidestep move, picks up another couple of yards. I mean, that Ramon Jefferson is something else. It's first down and goal from the 10-yard line. The Bearcats leading 35-7, to 3.07 to go on the Miller time game clock here in the third. As Schmidt had an empty backfield, now since Jefferson in motion, identical play as he stands to his right. This time, Jefferson has it left side, loses his footing, lunges forward to the four-yard line. If he hadn't lost his step, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, looks like Turf Monster got him, but uh, 
Man, what a hole he was going to run through. Dalton Meyer, the tight end, will run onto the field for Sam Houston as Chandler Harvin will quickly run off. Ramon Jefferson out there running back to the left side of Eric Schmidt, second down and goal from the four. A day, the lone Bearcat receiver to the left. Look for a run to the right, possibly. Schmidt, handoff, no, keeps it, fakes it, looking. Schmidt throws right side up, and it's well out of bounds. That should have been a pass interference. Oh, that's what you hear wow. the fans. They want a pass interference. <laughs> Isaac Schley got tackled out there. There was no call. They got tackled before the ball got there. It's all Dalton Meyer out there as well. So you don't see Dalton Meyer and Isaac Schley out there at the same time well, usually. Tight end set. He had yep. he was running a kind of a flare out. And boy, that Jacksonville State defender was all over him. Brennan Tibbs back out onto the field now. It's third down and goal from the four. Ramon Jefferson to the left of Schmidt, Tibbs to the right. Ezard out there as well to the right, Cody Crest to the left. Schmidt, handoff, Jefferson, inside, touchdown! Oh, baby, Ramon, come on, Jefferson from four yards out. Get those insurance policies going, baby, 41-7 to for the Cats. Well, I tell you what, man, this offense for Sam Houston, you know, this whole team, I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders and making Jacksonville State pay for every mistake they make. Four yards for Ramon Jefferson. And the Bearcats putting it on here. 20 points as it sits right now in the third. They had seven in the first, 14 in the second. And Seth Morgan trying to make it an extra point kick good. The snap the hold, the kick, it is good. And the Bearcats have 21 in the third. Bryant now 42 unanswered points to lead 42 to 7 with 2.12 to go here in the third quarter. And what's interesting is they started this game out and Jacksonville State got on the board first and they haven't seen the end, close to the end zone since then. The Sam Houston defense is just playing nasty football, getting turnovers left and right. And this offense for Sam Houston is making a pay for it. Warren Stripling listening in from Conroe saying, eat them up, Cats. Great broadcast. Appreciate you, Warren. If you'd like to text us, the Bearcat fan text line is open, 512-522-9105. Again, that number, save it in your phone. Don't text and drive, 512-522-9105. If you call it, we won't answer it. I've already had someone call it while ago. We won't answer it. Uh, we can only take text messages on it. Here is Cameron Hearn, who has been busy here in this ball game. Looks to the left, looks to the right, runs up, 35, kick on its way, end over end. This one will sell into the end zone. Way back into the end zone. Cameron Hearn just blew that ball through the field. Wow. Jacksonville State will start on their own 25-yard line, trailing 42-7. to Brian, I, I said earlier, that, you know, Stephen F. Austin is always a, a guaranteed cup, tough contest. Maybe I stepped over my bounds a little bit saying that this would be the toughest for Sam Houston. But in reality, this is a tough team. But tonight, this afternoon, Sam Houston, boy, the coach talked about they just have to come out and punch them. They've done that, but they've done it here in the second half as well with 21 points. Here's Cooper in the gun. He'll hand off to his running back, Raya West. And Uriah West, only a gain of about three up to the 28-yard line. This drive starting on the 25, second down and seven. Kavian Gaither there for Sam Houston, defensive back in on the stop. And you know what, you're right. Coach Casey Keeler said, hey, you know what, maybe we haven't really felt like we've played like the number one team in the country. We need to go out and play like that. And I'll tell you what, they are absolutely playing like the number one team in the country. Cooper, 13 to 27, 149 and an interception in this ball game. He'll stand in the gun, trips to the right for Jacksonville State, one up top to the left, has a running back to his left. Snap back, pass from the 21. Has his receiver, has the first down at the 35, up to the 36-yard line is P.J. Wells. He's got the first down. They're on the left side at the 36. Yeah, nice catch there by Wells. That ball was thrown behind him by Cooper, and he was able to hang on to it. Gives him a first down, but that was a real nice catch. Bernard Boston texting us on the fan line, saying, Go Cats, number one. Appreciate you, Bernard. Always good to hear from you, my friend. It's first and 10 from the 36. Jacksonville State on their own side. Trips to the right. Cooper 
fakes the pass, decides to run, and he'll pay for it up to the 39-yard line. That Bearcat Orange Storm defense all over him. Well, I tell you what, Cooper is taking it like a running back and just diving his head in there and getting hammered, and I promise he's going to feel that tomorrow. Javon Leon will run off the field, and coming back into the game is Joseph Wallace. Also heading back over to the sideline for Sam Houston is Richard Outland. He's a freshman defensive lineman. Good to see some of these young guys getting some time. Four up front on the defense for Sam Houston, second and seven for Jacksonville State from the 39. Cooper has to avoid one, pressures all over him, somehow completes the pass for the first down on the left side as he had big Joe Wallace on him like butter on a pancake and was able to make that reception for the first down to the Bearcat 49. Well, Cooper tries to hit his drop step and he has to run for his life because that front four for Sam Houston is winning every battle of the big men. And he was fortunate he had a wide out that was open. He could dump it off to him. Carlos Sanchez joining us from San Antonio. Appreciate you, Carlos. First down and 10 from the Bearcat 49. Handoff goes to West on the right side. Finding daylight down to the 35. And finally, was brought out of bounds. Good job there on that play. Pushing him out uh, was Kavian Gaither. Yeah, you're right, West. That's probably one of his best runs of the afternoon. Big first down for them. They're trying to make something happen. That will wind us down to the end of the third quarter. Sam Houston, seven in the first, 14 in the second, 21 in the third. Will we see 28 in the fourth, Brian? Oh, man, you imagine. 42 to seven, Sam Houston in the driver's seat. We'll step aside. We'll take 90 seconds from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. For the best customer service and best deal on your new Ford, head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville, your noble headquarters. Thinking something sporty and great on gas? Check out the 2022 Ford Explorers and Expeditions. Don't see what you want on the lot? You can still get a noble deal on a special order with the assistance of your sales associate or just go to BillFickFord.com. Click order here and design your new Ford today. Built for you, by you. Bill Fick Ford, I-45 South in Huntsville. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bearcat Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. The top-ranked Bearcat defense taking care of business in this game. They are the top-ranked in the WAC. In five games, they've only allowed 351 rushing yards. Today, though, they've allowed 89, but still doing a great job here in the offense taking care of business. They've only, the defense also, they've only allowed seven points from Jacksonville State. Well, if you look at all aspects of Sam Houston football, that's why they're number one in the country. Their defense, their offense, and their special teams, I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders. They have weapons everywhere. They're playing just as a, as a unit uh, that is number one in the country. And, man, it is fun to watch them. Came into this game with eight interceptions. I believe they've added two to that now, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep. Two fumble recoveries in this ball game as well. Yep, Javon Leon uh, knocked one loose and recovered it. I mean, you're talking about, you think, as you were saying earlier, Rob, that all these records that you thought would, would, I mean, they keep breaking stuff. I I mean, it's just amazing the records, the things Sam Houston keeps doing. Actually, one interception in this ball game, two fumble recoveries. They're plus three in the turnover battle. Coach Keeler always says he likes plus four. 42 to seven, Sam Houston with the lead as we start the fourth quarter, 15 minutes on that Miller time game clock. Bearcat defense trying to keep Jacksonville State out of the end zone. Now they move. 
Jacksonville State from right to left on the right hash mark at the Bearcat 31. They started on their own 25. Cooper's in the gun. Punt fakes, looking to pass over center. And this one is well incomplete to Ahmad Edwards. Edwards was asking for a flag, and he's not going to get it. No, uh, he had Daryl Hawkins-Williams there on the coverage, and, uh, man, he was all over him, but what uh, – no pass interference there on Sam Houston. Brings up second down and 10. Jacksonville State now with the sunshine to their back, the wind in their favor. As that wind is blowing steadily to the north, out of the south. Second down and 10. The 31 yard line of Sam Houston. Cooper in the gun. Handoff goes to his running back west. This time west, nowhere to go. Boy, he ran into Sean Mustin and Big Joseph Wallace. Javon Leon getting up off the pile. I mean, that's uh, that's a tough bunch of guys to run against. Had another message come in. Richard in Dodge, Texas says, even we senior citizens of Walker County say, keep it up, Bearcats. We appreciate you guys and all of our audience. Thank you so much for cheering on Sam Houston, Richard. It's third down and 10 for Jacksonville State on the Bearcat 31. West the running back to the right of Cooper. Triplets and a triangle on the left side in between the marks. Here's the shotgun snap. Cooper has to get rid of it, and this is incomplete. The pressure was brought up front by Javon Leon. I think Mustin was in on it as well. We'll see who that was. I know Leon was there. It may have been Colby Thomas, actually. Yeah, it was Colby Thomas back there is with him, and there is an injured Jacksonville State player on the field. Yeah, Sean Mustin in on that as well. Brings up fourth and 10 for Jacksonville, the player down. There is a player, we'll go ahead and step aside for an injury timeout. We'll be back in a moment from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. At HEB, we know that game day is about more than the game itself. The taste of victory is unparalleled, but so is the taste of HEB jalapeno poppers hot off the grill. Seeing the best players in their prime is truly something to behold. So is an HEB Prime One burger that you grilled to perfection. For low prices on all the things that make game day great and delicious, visit HEB, your official game day headquarters, or use the Buy HEB app to order curbside and start prepping for game day right away. The injured player for Jacksonville State, it was the left tackle, Tylen Grable, and he was able to walk off with a little bit of assistance from his teammates. It's a redshirt sophomore at Gordon, Georgia, 6'7", 290. That is a big young man down there, and uh, hopefully everything's okay with him. Again, he's walking pretty gingerly there with a couple of his teammates and his trainer to his left side. Yeah, well, that's a big boy, 6'7", 290. My goodness. 42 to 7, our score, 14.09 to go on the Miller Time game clock. Here in the fourth quarter, Sam Houston taking care of business in this ball game. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams from the Dosecki's broadcast booth. No store does more than buy HEB. HEB, a proud supporter of Sam Houston Athletics. Also, our friends in Ticket Smarter. Nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like TicketSmarter.com. Download the app today and stay tuned at the end of this ball game for the Ticket Smarter play of the game. And also our good friends at Talents Sausage in Riverside. Talents Sausage in Riverside. We'll get back to playing here after the injury timeout. Jacksonville State will face fourth down and 10. Of course, they're going to go for it here, moving from right to left, trailing 42 to 7. They're on the Bearcat 31. Cooper, the quarterback. West, the running back. Cooper fakes the handoff, looking to pass. Has some daylight, throws right side. This one is broken up and incomplete. Incomplete on the play. Great defense there by Sam Houston. Yeah, ball go over on down. Sam Houston will have it first and on the 31-yard line. 
with 14 minutes and two seconds left in the ball game. I think that was Kavian Gaithier again coming up with the play. We've called his name quite a bit here this afternoon. Yeah, he's had an active game this afternoon. 13th possession for the Bearcats. Eric Schmidt will stay in. Ramon Jefferson as well. Two receivers up top to the left. Tony Williams to that left side for the Bearcats as a receiver. He's seen some action this season. Getting a little bit more here as the Bearcats are up. From the 31-yard line on their own side, Schmidt looking to pass, throws. This one, oh, it's intercepted. It was a misroute play, miscommunication, and intercepted at the 50-yard line. Eric Schmidt probably took one of the nastiest hits I've seen all year long. As he threw that football, he got wrapped up and drilled onto the ground. Yeah, and he's walking off a little soft on that play, wow. too. Man, he took a shot. Dustin Lenorman, the trainer. I mean, as soon, look as, his, at him. Yeah, as soon as his throwing arm came down, he got wrapped up and taken down on the back of his helmet immediately. And I promise you, he felt it. Yeah, he's sitting on the bench. Dustin Lenorman having a chat with him. All appears to be okay. Trapper Panel also joining him down there. Ife Adeis. Down there with him as well. The interception, that's been the only fluke really of this ball game. 13th possession for Jacksonville State. They will start on their own 49-yard line. Cooper stepping back, bouncing through his own defenders. He is drilled in the backfield after he passes. And, oh, man, he's going to have to pay for that one. He may not get up for a while. Boy, these quarterbacks are just taking a beating. That was Sean Mustin. Oh, man, the rodeo came out there by Sean Mustin. Oh, my goodness. Jahari K was on him, but Sean Mustin just drills Cooper, and he has not gotten up. It is incomplete. He did manage to get the ball away, but Sean Mutton, Bustin Mustin, brought all of that 6'3", 325 pounds out of California on him. And he went down hard at the 40. Oh, I'm watching these quarterbacks. And man, I'm just glad it's them down there, not me. Man. We'll step aside. We'll take a 30-second break from Van Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Enjoy a great round of golf at the Bearcat Course, formerly Raven Nest. Conveniently located on the southbound side of 45 in Huntsville, the Bearcat Course offers award-winning value with special rates for alumni, faculty, staff, and students of Sam Houston State University. Memberships are available for as low as $139 per month that include unlimited greens fees and cart fees for the whole family. Visit the golf shop to get fitted for equipment and for the full stock of Sam Houston State University logoed men's and women's apparel. Let's play golf at the all-new Bearcat Course in Huntsville. Zarek Cooper will come off the field. New quarterback in there for Jacksonville State. Luckily, Cooper was able to walk off. But, man, that was just a one of the biggest hits that I have seen by Sam Houston in a very long time. Think, so of, think about Sean Mustin. He, this guy weighs 320 pounds. 320 pounds coming and landing on you. Man, mm -mm -mm. Cooper's going to go out, and new quarterback come in for Jacksonville State. And so with 13.48 to go on the Miller time game clock, Sam Houston leading 42-7. to Caldwell is the one who is second in the order, a 6'4", 195 freshman out of Auburn High School, Alabama. He's 10 for 19 on the season, 52%, 98 yards in an interception. He has rushed five times for 27, has a touchdown. But they haven't broken out of the huddle yet, Brian. I, I don't know if that's going to be him or not. I would assume it is. Well, I think it's going to be because I believe Cooper uh, just took his helmet off, walked off on the sidelines, trying to clear his head, I'm sure. They stretched it to a media timeout during that injury. That's the reason for the delay here. The ball is on the 49-yard line for Jacksonville State on their side, moving from right to left. It is the freshman Caldwell, and he will lead the team out there now on the right hash mark. 6'4", 195. He is in the gun, has a back to his right, gets the playoff looking, and they whistle this one. Yeah, they whistled it dead, then they let him play for a few seconds, and then they whistle it dead again. A signal, it's second down. 
Not sure what the call is there, but. Uh, Please reset the game clock to 13 minutes and 48 seconds. They wanted the game One, clock three, reset. Four, That's eight. what's happening. Thank you. If you're hearing that static in the background, we apologize. That is a feed coming from the crowd system here. We can't control that. It's second down and 10. Caldwell, chase to the right, throws this one. It's intercepted almost. It's incomplete at the 50. That would have been his second interception of the season. Sam Houston almost had the interception. It was thrown right into the numbers of Denzel Sims. Oh, my goodness. Denzel Sims. It, <laughs> he'd love to have that opportunity again. It hit him right in his numbers, and he could not hang on to it. It's another third down here for Jacksonville State. They are 4 of 14 today. From the 49-yard line, moving from right to left, 13.43 to go on the Miller time. Game clock here in the final frame. Two receivers to the right on the right hash mark. Caldwell looking, throws over center, has a man, and he is drilled and slammed back at the 50-yard line. It's a short gain on the play. P.J. Wells had to pay for that one. Boy, that was a big hit after the catch, and it looks like they're going to try to punt this ball away. Cody Crest back deep for Sam Houston to receive the kick. Paul Brown is out camping with uh, Boy Scout Troop 98, enjoying the broadcast. We appreciate you. Paul Brown, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Also, our good friends Robert and Sally Hosea listening in the garage and in the house. Keep it up and go Cats. Here's the punt. Fair catch called for at the 10-yard line. I believe it's Cody Crest. And that is where Sam Houston will start it here. We'll see if Schmidt. Schmidt does come back out on the field. That's a good sign. That is a good sign because he took a beating on that last series of downs. I mean, look like he got wrapped up and drilled to the back of his helmet. But, yes, it's good to see him back out there. And also, with this kind of lead at this kind of time left, you're going to see some guys get some playing time, some invaluable playing time. And that's, again, what makes this team so good is giving these guys experience. Well, Schmidt is still out there, of course. Chandler Harvin, I believe, is there. Ramon Jefferson is still out there. And then Tony Williams, the wide receiver to the left. So they still got some of their core out there right now. From the 10-yard line, first down and 10 for Schmidt into the sunshine. He'll hand off to Jefferson to the right side. 10-yard line, Jefferson pushes forward to the 12. It's a hard-fought two yards on first down for Ramon Jefferson, second and long coming up. Yeah, Jefferson just trying to cut it up, never really gets an opportunity to. Isaac Sly, the big tight end, trying to open up a hole for him. Tony Williams all alone to the left, Chandler Harbin down to the right. It is second down and eight from the 12-yard line. Schmid in the gun, stands on the seven. On the right hash mark, calls for it, fakes the handoff. Harbin has it, the pass. Harvin trying to push forward to the 20. He will be denied only up to the 19-yard line. Third down and a short one coming up for Sam Houston. Yeah, look for a handoff up the middle with uh, Ramon Jefferson. Done a really good job today converting on these third downs. Give credit to that O-line for opening up some nice holes for him to run through. Third down and one for Sam Houston Schmidt. On the right hash mark, one receiver to either side. He'll send Harvin in motion. Hand off Jefferson. Jefferson's got the first down and more as he turns on the big wheels across the 30-yard line up to the 32 on the right marker. Boy, Jefferson is such a tough runner. He'd rather punish the defense. Man, good first down pickup there by Jefferson. How about this while well ago, Tony Minton sent us a message. Number seven, Penn State loses to Illinois 20 to 18 in an NCAA FCS record nine overtimes. No kidding. Oh man, wow. I would be broadcasting for a couple of weeks after that, Brian. Wow. It's first down and 10 for the Cats on their own 32, 11, 24 to go on the Miller time. Game clock, Schmid, shotgun snap, handoff Noah Smith, goes behind his right tackle and Smith up to around the 36-yard line, or his right guard, rather. Second down and six after the four-yard pickup. Looks like Weston Stevens 
freshman running back out there from Lakeway, Texas. Getting an opportunity this afternoon. Here we go, second down and six. Schmidt in the gun on the 31, the ball on the 36. As he will hand off to that running back on the left side, Weston Stevens, and Stevens up to the 38, a two yard carry will bring up third down. Yeah, not a bad little run. It was just off the, the center guard gap over the left side. Stevens had some action a week ago. Three carries for eight yards on the season, nine for 22 entering this game. Isaac Sly, the tight end, will head over to the sideline. Dalton Myron is a receiver, part of a triplet package to the right. One Bearcat up to the left. Third down and four from the 38 in between the hash marks for Schmid with the sun on his face. He'll clap for it, gets the shotgun snap, back to the 30, throws this one over and incomplete. We'll see if there was a flag there. And actually, that was not Eric Schmidt, the new quarterback in there, as well as Keegan Shoemaker. Keegan Shoemaker did such a great job at the Battle of the Piney Woods, leading Sam Houston to a one-point win over SFA. Thought there for a second there was pass interference, but there was no call. Cameron Hearn will punt this one away. McRobert not out there. Cameron Hearn, who kicks off, he will punt. On fourth down and four, Hearn has it. The punt on its way. This one a nice punt as it will drop at the 21-yard line. 9.47 to go. We got flags flying here at the end of this one as there's a Jacksonville State player that his helmet was off, and he looked upset. Hudson Petty, and he was having a chat down there with Sam Houston's Tanner Boston. Didn't yeah. look like a good chat either. Well, I think I got a little extra curricular going on. Look like a helmet maybe got ripped off. After the play, personal foul, face mask, number 53, kicking team. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. The player whose helmet came off may remain in the game as his helmet came off due to foul. Timeout on the field. Well, Tanner Boston, the one there committing the personal foul against Sam Houston. That's already the second personal foul this game. We'll step aside. We'll take a media timeout. We'll be back in 90 seconds. 42-7 to your score. Sam Houston leading 9.47 to go from Ben Wagner. This is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Know what pairs well with a national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted Best Butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Curious about what real estate agents enjoy the most? It's about reminding our clients that dreams really do come true. Remax is the number one real estate company nationwide. Remax Prime Properties is a locally owned family business in Huntsville. Need a realtor knowledgeable in our area? Call one of our experienced agents and let us guide you home. Remax Prime Properties is located at 1215 Financial Plaza, Huntsville, Texas, and is a proud partner of SHSU Athletics. Eat them up, cats. Hi, this is Will Smith, and I'm proud of our family business, but I am also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration, and we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats. Welcome back, friends. 9.47 to go in the Miller Time game clock. Rob Hip alongside the former Bearcat quarterback Brian Adams in the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Sam Houston taking care of business on homecoming day, the 200th game at Bauer Stadium in the history of this facility, 42-7. to Bearcats, 430 total yards, 227 through the air, 203 on the ground. They have 22 first downs compared to only 12 for Jacksonville State. Well, that's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about just complete dominance of Jacksonville State this afternoon. Jacksonville State will start first and 10 on their own 36-yard line, moving from right to left, sunshine to the back, wind in their favor. As the quarterback called well, an incomplete pass to the right side as he was, pressure was brought on him. Well, Jalen Phillips, number 10 linebacker, freshman from Katy, Texas, hot on his trail, makes him throw the ball. 
way earlier than he wanted to, and he just drills it to the ground. Josh Samuel, the running back, is in there. Also, Matt LaRoche. LaRoche will come in. As a running back to the left, Samuel to the right. Two receivers to the right, one down to the left. Ball on the left half, left hash mark, second and 10 from the 36. Handoff will go to LaRoche, and he is met by a brick wall and slammed to the ground. The forward progress will get him back to the original line of scrimmage on the right side, but the Orange Storm not going to allow him through. This is a team that very rarely allows anybody to rush over 100 yards. They've only allowed 89 here today. Well, that's incredible. That's number six, Trey Fields on the tackle. And, man, these guys don't just want to tackle you. They want to throw you around, and that's uh, that aggressive defense of Sam Houston. 9-12 and ticking on that Miller time game clock. Third and 10 for Jacksonville State from the 36. Caldwell passing, has a man open and a first down as he caught it there on the right side around the 47-yard line. Good reception by Quan Charleston. He is a senior or a junior out of Lindell High School in Alabama. Yeah, great route there by Charleston. It was just a basically a curl route in his own defense. He curls and stops. Ball hits him in his chest when he makes his turn. Nice first down, Jacksonville State. Up until that play, they were only 4 of 15 on third down. First down and 10 from the 49 for Jacksonville State. Delayed handoff to the left side. Running back has a lot of room here. And he gets it all the way to the 20-yard line on the left side. That was Matt LaRoche. And he put Jacksonville State over 100 yards now on the ground. A lot more than that. And that's a rarity against this Sam Houston defense. Well, that's, again, one of these double numbers you were talking about earlier. Trey Smith, number three, defensive back, making the tackle on that play. They've had some younger guys. I haven't been able to see some of those numbers on those four up front for Sam Houston. Yeah, they've got, they're going back to some of their third deep. Bryson Hayes, a freshman, is out there. He's from Huntsville. Here is Caldwell, passes this one. As pressure was being brought in the backfield, it's incomplete. Matthew Caldwell is being chased back there. Nowhere for him to go as Trey Fields was all over him. It's second down and 10 for Jacksonville State. 8-14 to go on the Miller time game clock. The Bearcat 21-yard line trailing 42-7. Caldwell in the gun, two receivers to the right, one back to either side. He'll hand off here to LaRoche, I believe, and he just pummeled on the ground. Great defense by Sam Houston. Well, that was good defense. You talk about Bryson Hayes, number 59, former Huntsville Hornet. I mean, he just got... I mean, held like you wouldn't believe. No call, but my goodness. Yeah, they're going back here. Very young defensive line now. Cameron Washington is out there. He's out of Mansfield, Texas. He's only a freshman. Richard Outland, also a freshman out of Houston. And then Bryson Hayes from here in Huntsville, Texas. So they got the young guys getting some experience here. Third down and 10 for Jacksonville State from the Bearcat 21. Caldwell passes in the flats over the right side to Samuel. Samuel has enough for the first down. Another helmet pops off here for Jacksonville State. LeSean Jarrett lost his helmet. He'll have to come off for a play. It is a first down, though, to the 10-yard line for the Gamecocks. Well, they're trying to do something. I mean, they haven't scored since the very first possession of the ball game. <clears throat> and here they are driving late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they scored, go back to their second possession, second, Seven, yeah. 7.44 to go back in the first. It's been 42 unanswered. Here's Caldwell in the gun, first and goal from the 10. He'll hand off here to Samuel, and Samuel picks up a couple to the eight-yard line on the right hash mark. Well, Jacksonville State, after that rush while ago, they're starting to put some yards on now. They were under 200, now showing 315 on the board. 196 through the air, 119 on the ground. But again, a very young defense for Sam Houston. 640 and ticking on the Miller time game clock. 42 to 7, Jacksonville State threatening second and goal from the eight. Caldwell, hand off Samuel. Samuel this time met by the wall and he has slammed down. They will give him forward progress for about a yard or so up to the six yard line. They'll call it two yards, third down and goal. Yeah, they're just trying to run it up the middle and he ran into a wall, but you're right, Rob. There's a lot of freshmen out there playing right now for Sam Houston. They're doing a really good job. 
It's third down for Jacksonville State. The Bearcat young defense trying to hold them. Trey Smith is back there. The defensive back, he's a junior. Five up front for the Cats. Caldwell looking to pass on third and goal. Chase down, airs it left corner, incomplete. Nowhere close as he was looking in the direction of P.J. Wells, and it's fourth down. We'll see if they go for it or just try to kick in a field goal. Well, Bryson Hayes almost got to Caldwell. Looked like he got part of his jersey grab. No holding. Well, Javon Leon's going to come in here. Into the ball game is Javon Leon. And Will Jones, I don't think that was, it's Bryson Hayes, the defensive lineman. Will Jones is an offensive lineman. Bryson Hayes will come out. They're going to go for it here. Fourth down and goal from the six. Caldwell stepping back from the 15, looking. Flags fly. This one caught, but it's out of bounds in the end zone. And we'll see what this flag is. Maybe a hold in the backfield. Not sure, Brian. Well, I don't know. That's kind of where that flags, those flags come from. And it looks like Jacksonville State's offensive line Holding number 76 offense. The penalty is declined. First down, Sam Houston. Turnover on downs. The yep. Bearcats keep them out of the end zone. The young defense. Sam mm. Houston will have it for the 15th time tonight. Starting from their own six-yard line. Moving into the sunshine from left to right. Although there is some shadows now as the sun sets to our west. Shadows extending from the Sam Houston end zone on the left side or from the Jacksonville State end zone on the left side all the way up to around the 45-yard line. And then on the Bearcat end zone, that's almost completely shaded now. The rest of the field in sunshine. Shoemaker, the quarterback here, and forward progress will get it up to the four-yard line. It was a loss on the play to the four. No but, forward progress. No, handoff to Kyron Jackson up the middle. Nowhere to go. But, man, give that young defense from Sam Houston credit keeping Jacksonville State out of the end zone a while ago. Running back in there now for Sam Houston. I'm sure Dalton Meyer was lining up like he was a running back for a moment. Shoemaker. Maybe a free play as Jacksonville State goes offside. Throws this one up, and is that caught? That yeah, pass was caught. caught on the left side. Shoemaker threw a prayer to the left side, and it was caught by Sam Houston at the 32-yard line. The officials are going to talk this one over for a moment. I think everybody's confused down there. Yeah. Shoemaker just heaved one up. It looked like he threw it up, and it looked like it was short. Offside, the... numbers 10 and 50, defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty at second down. He threw it up to Derek Rose. And I'm not sure if he caught that, then why didn't they decline it? Oh, well, I guess he didn't look, catch it. It looked like Ryan Humphreys was over there saying he did catch it. Yeah, they're going to say they made no indication of an incomplete pass. Third down and – well, what are we at, Brian? Second down and six? Second and six. Second down and six for Sam Houston. On the 10-yard line, Shoemaker, the quarterback, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Handoff will go here to the young back. I believe it's Kyron Jackson up to around the 14-yard line. Kyron Jackson, the ball carrier. Action, Jackson. Jackson. Brian, he's never the last one. I was waiting. I knew it was coming. <laughs> and now third down and a short two for Sam Houston, leading 42-7, 4.44 to go on the Miller Time game clock. The Bearcats, in a few moments, will improve to 6-0 on the season. Jackson in motion. Shoemaker, the quarterback, in the shade. To the five-yard line, rolls to the left, looking, scanning. Trying to elude two defenders. Shoemaker will run. And he finally goes out of bounds around the 18-yard line on the left side. Well, he's close over there to the first he down marker. He may have got it. He was going for that first down marker. I think he got it, Brian. I think, he was, I think it is a first down. It is a first down as Shoemaker took off and ran for it. They're going to officially mark him down around the 16. That's where he had to get to, and it's a Bearcat first down. Nice play by Shoemaker. Nobody open downfield. Take it yourself. It's first down and 10 for Sam Houston on the 16-yard line on their own side, leading 42-7. to Here is a handoff. As it was slow developing, 
And not much there on the run. Maybe a gain of one or two. Yeah, it looked like Jackson. Oh. No, it was not Jackson. I was oh. trying to see who that was. Weston Stevens, the ball carrier. Yeah, Stevens takes it off the left side, picks up a couple three yards. Carry. 3.40 and ticking on that Miller time game clock. Trips down to the right. Two receivers to the left. Five wide here for Shoemaker and the Bearcats. From the 20, Shoemaker wants to keep it here to the right side. And he is brought down after a short gain up to the 22-yard line. Still well short of the first down. Has to get up to the 27. Well, Shoemaker is a talented runner also. You think about Eric Smith who runs a 4-4-40. Coach Casey Keeler thinks Shoemaker is just as good or maybe just a little bit uh, better on the run than Eric Smith. Eric that. Rose are running back up to the left. Ryan Humphreys, the receiver down to the right. Would love to see a pass go to Ryan Humphreys here on that right side. So he'll line up around the 20. Ball on the 22-yard line actually is where it sits. Says Shoemaker will step back. It is Humphreys, and Humphreys has a first down to the right side. Oh, mama, what a pass. And it's great to see Ryan Humphreys in there grabbing one for a first down. Nice route by Humphreys. It's a 10 to 12 yard curl route. Comes back to the ball. Gets it right in on between the, the one and the four. Great reception. Got an injury timeout on the field. Ryan Humphreys going to get some high fives from his teammates. Of course, you know, Ryan is the holder on the team. He brings a lot of energy, works hard, if not harder than anyone else on the team. And he is just part of this amazing culture that has been built over this program under head coach Casey Keeler in the past eight years. There's an injured Jacksonville State player down near his own sideline. We've seen quite a few of those. They're actually near the Bearcat sideline. He is moving and he'll hop up. In fact, that may have been kind of a case of the cramps that he may have gotten as he jogs off. That's a good sign. Coaches are already standing in the booth to our left. 2.45 to go here in this ball game on the Miller time game clock. 42 to 7. Sam Houston in the driver's seat. They put up 449 total yards of offense. A well-balanced attack today. 235 through the air. 214 on the ground. And now it's Trapper Panel in as quarterback. Two receivers up top in the sun to the left, one down to the right. Panel claps for it at the 25. He'll hand off to Stevens, and Weston Stevens up to the 32-yard line. A short gain of two brings up second down. So you go through here, get the first down, and that should just run the Weston clock down. The well, Sam Houston get some of these second and third guys out there, gets valuable playing time because as the season progresses, Gonna want them to have all the experience they can get. It's second down and eight for Sam Houston from the 32 yard line on their own side, favoring the right hash mark. Trapper panel hands off to Steven. Stevens trying to zigzag his way behind his tackle on the right side and only back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, they're gonna give him one. That'll bring up third down and seven. Well, a while ago, Shoemaker did a great job converting a third down, taking the ball himself and picking up the first. Two receivers to either side for Trapper Panel and the Bearcats with 1.30 to go. He'll stand on the right mark in the gun of the 31. Claps for it, gets the snap. This time he keeps it. Panel can run. He got tripped up a little bit. Here goes Panel. He takes off to the 45. It looked like he was going to go down in the backfield. He was able to stay on his feet to the left side. It's a first down for the Bearcats. Trapper Panel is a running machine. What a great run by Panel, folks. He had a linebacker wait to take him down. He made two moves, got around him, makes his cut upfield and picks up the first down. Trapper Panel, great job. That should do it for the Bearcats. They'll be able to take a knee the rest of the way. The Bearcats, after giving up just seven early, 42 unanswered. And Sam Houston taking care of business here this afternoon. The clock down to 50. As it winds down, make sure to stay tuned. For the Ticket Smarter play of the game, we'll have that coming up in post game. And one more knee should do it. There's about a second differential from the game clock and the play clock. So 
Again, the coaches to our left, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Ryan Carty, packing up his materials. It's always a good one when you know these guys can get out of here before the clock strikes zero. <laughs> I know, right? The next knee, and the Bearcats take the final knee of the game. <laughs> Sam Houston victorious as they will improve in conference play and now a perfect 6-0 on the season, 17 in a row in the 200th game at Bowers Stadium. We'll step that aside. The the game. We'll take a break. Post game coming up. When we come back from Ben Wagner, this is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. Sudden Link Cable, Wishnewski Dodge, Texas Farm Bureau, Texpress Urgent Care, Ticket Smarter, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Join the Sam Houston State University Alumni Association. For only $35 a year, your membership helps provide scholarship assistance, plus networking, a travel program, discounts on home and auto insurance, car rentals, event tickets, and much more. Connect with your Bearcat pride and spirit by joining the Alumni Association. Go online, alumni.shsu.edu. As a member, you can be a part of something bigger. The Sam Houston State University Alumni Association. Join today. So I'm here with Clint Mack from Wiesner of Huntsville. What would you say to someone who has never been to Wiesner of Huntsville? Come try the experience for yourself. We do things different here. We're a very relational business. We're not a transactional business, and we want to make you feel like you're part of our family. Is there a Wiesner difference or a Wiesner experience? There is. It would be honesty and integrity. We've stood by that, and we are going to continue that in a world that doesn't necessarily live by those rules. Well, you've heard from Clint Mack at Wiesner of Huntsville, and if you haven't tried Wiesner of Huntsville, go do so. You'll be glad you did. Our Tech Signs and Lighting Incorporated is a family-owned, full-service business based in Huntsville, Texas. For over 20 years, they do business cards, decals, yard signs, banners, and billboards to name a few. They can design and fabricate electrical signs to fit your business needs. Busted signs and lights? Their 45-foot bucket truck and in-house electrician can service you. They are located at 625 Highway 190 East. Give them a call at 936-435-9966. Our Tech Signs and Lighting Incorporated looks forward to serving you. 101.7 KSAM, your home for the national champion Bearcats. Here's more with Rob Hip and Brian Adams. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip, Brian Adams. I see my buddy Broderick Nixon out there with the team. Good to see him. Love that young man. Bearcats victorious in this ball game, 42 to seven over Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks go down. Bearcats take care of business. They go to six and zero on the season. Brian, a great game. Started out with that quick touchdown. We thought, oh, wait a minute. But this Bearcat team, they have faced way much more adversity than that throughout the past two seasons. They take care of business in convincing fashion. And I believe playing, like Keeler said, we got to get back to playing like a national or number one team in the nation. I think today they proved that. Without a doubt. I mean, they played like the number one team in the country. I mean, on all aspects of their game, offensively, defensively, special teams, I mean, that's why they're number one in the country. And Jacksonville State came into Bowers today on the 200th game, Rob, as you said earlier, and just met a buzzsaw of Bearcats. A buzzsaw it was, and a great one here for the folks. For those of you leaving the stadium, thanks for being here and supporting Sam Houston, the crowds. It has been amazing this season, oh, of course, with capacity back to 100%. Yes. This place has been packed every game. I mean, and you feel the electricity too. When we come in here, we do our pregame show 30 minutes before game time, and then game time kicks off. 
you feel it. I mean, you look out, you see a sea of orange on both sides of the field. You see the electricity among the players. What a great time to be here. Well, our Ticket Smarter play of the game, it's time for that. The smart play of the game presented by Ticket Smarter. We go back to when Ramon Jefferson, by the way, who had a great night tonight, two right. touchdowns in this game. Ramon Jefferson, back in the first half, had a 33-yard touchdown run for Sam Houston to get things started. We'll have that for you here. Inside. Schmidt claps for it once, gets it on the second clap. Delayed handoff, Jefferson. Ping pong, left side. 20, 15, 10, 5. Ramon, come on, Jefferson. 33 yards, and that's a Bearcat touchdown. What a play. What blocking up. And that is your smart play of the game brought to you by Ticket Smarter, the best place to find tickets to the hottest sports, concerts, and live events near you. Visit TicketSmarter.com or download the app to secure your tickets now. Stay with us, friends. We'll continue with postgame as we look at team stats. When we come back from Van Wagner, this is the Bearcat Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners, The Grove, Tough Shirts and Eagle Graphics, U.S. Army ROTC, Under Armour, University Hotel, and Villas on Sycamore. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Are you looking for some Halloween fun? Look no further. Sam Houston State University Sports Management and Athletics are inviting you to the SHSU Women's Volleyball Game on October 28th at Johnson Coliseum. There will be Halloween-themed activities, including a costume contest, mummy wrapping, and thriller dance-off. Students get in free. All other tickets are $3 with promo code SPIKE. Doors open at 5.30 and the game starts at 6.30. Put on your costumes, grab your friends and family, and join in on the fun as we support our Bearcats. Eat them up, cats. Hometown proud, Bearcat strong. Back to the game on 101.7 KSAM. Welcome back, friends, live from the Dos Equis broadcast booth. Rob Hip, Brian Adams, Bearcats post game. Sam Houston taking care of business 42 to 7 in convincing faction. Seven points in the first quarter, 14 in the second, and then 28 points in the third. Brian, I thought maybe we were going to go for, you know, 28 or 21 points in the third. I thought we were going to go for 28 in the fourth. Uh, there was no score in the fourth, but we did see some different players and a little bit of younger defense come out there. There was a point in that fourth quarter where Jacksonville State was driving. Of course, they were already out of this ball game, but they got it down inside the red zone, inside the 10-yard line. It was a very young defense for Sam Houston. As those young guys got some playing time, they were able to hold them and keep them out of the end zone. Yeah, you're talking real young guys. You're talking about a lot of freshmen out there. They got a chance, and they they stood tall, kept him out of the end zone, did a great job. I mean, just like this defense, uh, you know, this whole defense for Sam Houston. I mean, again, I've said it, I don't know how many times, Rob. You know, I feel like they're the best in the country in FCS, and they proved it again today. I mean, just what they do to opponents, they get into the backfield, they disrupt the quarterback, and it just causes all kinds of problems for them. And then you got that very talented secondary of Sam Houston with the McCollum twins and, and guys like that back there picking balls off and, and just it makes offenses so frustrated. And then on the other side, you got Eric Schmidt. I mean, he is such a talented field general. If there's a wide out and he's not open downfield, he so, he'll pull the ball and he'll run and pick up first downs, and you can hardly defend that. And this is just a very tough Sam Houston team. Jacksonville State will look over their team stats. 319 total yards, 196 through the air, 123 on the ground. That is very rare for a Sam Houston defense to allow over 100 yards. Again, though, a young defense in that fourth quarter and that 123 really came on a big rush there in the fourth to get them over that 100-yard mark. Four penalties, 30 yards for the Gamecocks. They had 15 first downs, six of eight on, 13, on third down, one of three on fourth. They had a total of 74 plays, averaged just over 4.3 average yards per plays on the receiving end, almost 11 per grab, just under four yards per rush. They were in the red zone three times, Brian. They only converted once out of those three times. That's incredible. I mean, again, that goes to show you about that defense and uh, what they can do to you. And, you know, let's, let's talk about the special teams. I mean, we talk about defense, we talk about offense, talk about Matt McRobert and what he did today. I mean, just incredible performance by that punter. Uh, from Australia, and what a great guy. And and just every aspect, special teams, defense. I mean, you're talking about a team clicking on all cylinders, Rob, and they're undefeated this year, and they have just not missed a beat, man. 
We talked about that Ticket Smarter Smart play of the game while ago that went to R Ramon Jefferson. Well, that was set up because of Matt McRobert when he boomed that one, got it to the Jacksonville two-yard line, and that's where they started that drive. They had to punt, gave Sam Houston excellent field position on the Jacksonville 33, and then it was the one rush, one play touchdown by Ramon Jefferson. Continuing for Jacksonville State, again, one of three in the red zone. They had the ball for 28 minutes and three seconds, three total turnovers. Two of them were fumbles. One was an interception. Sam Houston able to capitalize, scoring 14 points on those three turnovers, one sack for 10 yards, and then four tackles for 15 yards of loss. For the victorious Sam Houston Bearcats, 463 total yards of offense and a well-balanced attack this afternoon, a 235 through the air, 228 on the ground. One area of concern, though, a couple of penalties, one of them Colby Thomas. That's kind of one of those penalties that shows up on a stat sheet. I don't really agree with it. His helmet popped off. He continued playing. You're not going to stop playing. Four penalties, 52 yards for Sam Houston, but there was another personal foul. Those are just the little things that you got to make sure you don't want those kind of penalties. No, you sure don't, but you're right. The helmet comes off. You're not going to stop playing. I don't care who you are. And so that just goes to show you what a well-disciplined football team Coach Casey Keeler has out there and a veteran group. But, man, these young guys getting an opportunity to play like they're getting to play uh, is just invaluable experience that they're going to just reap the rewards for later on down the road. But uh, overall, I, I mean, Sam Houston is the team to beat. I mean, they are the number one team in the country for a reason, and we just saw why today. I mean, they're playing ball on all cylinders. Sam Houston had 25 first downs, 9 of 16 on third. That's another great effort on third down. 1 of 2 on fourth down, 77 total plays. Keeler likes that number to be around 80 to 85 or so. So they're getting a little bit closer there, averaging 6 yards a play in this game, 13 yards per catch, also just over 5 yards per rush for Sam Houston three of three in the red zone this is a team when they get in the red zone historically over the past few years they've been able to punch it in they proved it again today three of three in the red zone yeah and, and when you're in the red zone you're the field compresses and it gets a lot tougher your room you run out of room and to be able to convert and be 100 percent in the red zone is outstanding work I mean that's all you can say and that's where you got to put the points on the board and Sam Houston does it all the time 31 minutes 57 seconds total possession for Sam Houston one turnover it was on the Eric Schmidt interception. They had two sacks, 15 yards for loss, four tackles, 21 yards lost on those tackles. That's the team stats. We'll step aside and take a brief break. When we come back here in post game, we'll go over individual stats and we'll wrap it up. Stay with us from Ben Wagner. This is the Bearcats Sports Radio Network. Sam Houston Athletics would like to thank the following partners. Double Dave's Pizza, Emblem Properties, Enterprise Holdings, Fast Signs, Faust Distributing, and First Financial Bank. Thank you for supporting your Bearcats. Know what pairs well with the national championship? A winning tailgate. Show your Bearcat pride when tailgating with only the best. For over 44 years, Talent Sausage has been treating our customers like family. You're sure to score a touchdown when grilling up our signature smoked sausage. Voted best butcher for 2021, Talent offers a full-service meat case, home-cooked barbecue in our deli, and aisles of grocery necessities. Make the short drive to stock up at Talent Sausage, located at 3736 Highway 19 in Riverside. Shop local, eat them up cats. Back at it here as we continue post action. It's Bearcat game Volleyball. Discussion. Season we'll tickets just $30 and single game matches are $5. Get your tickets today. Call 936-294-1729 or go online at gobearcats.com slash tickets. Bearcat football continues on KSAM. Here's Rob Hibb and Brian Adams. So we continue post-game discussion. Rob Hip alongside Brian Adams. Thanks for joining us here from Ben Wagner on the Bearcat Sports Radio Network as we look over the final stats here in this ball game as far as team or as individual stats. Sam Houston. Uh, we'll start actually with Jacksonville State. Zarek Cooper, the quarterback, 15 of 33, 169 yards. This young man has FCS experience as a backup quarterback at Clemson. Today, though, no touchdowns and an interception. He was injured towards the end of the game in the fourth. Matthew Caldwell came in for him, 3 of 8, 27 yards. On the rushing side for Jacksonville State, leading rusher was Uriah West, seven carries for 69 yards. His longest rush was 22, averaged 9.9 .9 per carry. Matt LaRoche, who had most of his action in that fourth quarter, four carries for 27 yards. Zarek Cooper, the quarterback, also 15 carries for 18 yards. On the receiving side for Jacksonville State, Josh Samuel in this ballgame, six receptions for 58 yards. That put him second 
in the receiving stat. Ahmad Edwards, though, three receptions for 69 yards. And third was P.J. Wells, three receptions for 26 yards. None of those um, young men had any touchdowns in this ballgame. It was seven receivers total, 18 grabs for 196 yards. For Sam Houston, Eric Schmid. A bounce back after last week at Lamar. Schmidt still played good in that game, but played much better here. He was coming off of an injury where he did not play in the Battle of the Piney Woods. 17 of 30, 227 through the air, two touchdowns. Did have that interception, uh, completing 57% of his passes. Then Keegan Shoemaker got some action late to come in and clean up time. One for two and eight yards. Ramon Jefferson leading the rushers tonight. 14 carries, 110 yards. Two touchdowns, had that long of 33, which was the ticket smart play of the game. Ramon Jefferson, it's great to have him out on the field. And such a dynamic backfield, Brian, along oh, with yeah. him and Noah Smith. Uh, these guys cannot be denied. Well, you got you got Noah Smith, who is more of a finesse-type runner, and then you got Ramon Jefferson, just kind of a punishing runner. And it, you're right, what a dynamic duo that Casey Keeler has at his disposal. I mean, both of these guys are super talented, but – Man, at one point in the third quarter, Ramon Jefferson, every time he got the ball handed to him, he picked up a first down, and it was just amazing to watch. I mean, he would get 10 yards at a time, and, uh, you know, he is such a talented runner, but he's a very patient runner, you know, Rob. He lets the play develop. He lets the line make blocks for him, and he runs off their hip and just picks up mass yards. And then Noah Smith, he is deadly out in the flats. I mean, throw in the ball, man, let him pick up another 10 or 12 dangerous and how about that for the rushing side eight rushers total 45 carries 228 yards incredible it's good to have that kind of dynamic back there eric schmidt was the second leading rusher tonight 12 carries for 40 yards ife a day two two carries for 25 noah smith had four for 20 after his career game two weeks ago before the bye week on the receiving side jaquez ezard second in receiving yardage seven carries or seven receptions for 84 yards and a touchdown ife a day three grabs for 88 yards and a touchdown ife continues to impress me game in and game out Oh, absolutely. I mean, the guy is just incredibly talented. I mean, the the run after the catch, it looked like he got almost brought down, and he made he made he was able to gather his uh, his feet about him and get into the end zone. But I mean, he is just he runs his routes very crisp and very tight, and it's those things you can't hardly defend. I mean, as soon as he makes a cut, the ball is there, and you're not going to stop that. Noah Smith, three receptions for 22 yards. Brennan Tibbs, two for 20. Chandler Harvin, two of 13. And then Ryan Humphreys had a first down to put the game away. It was already away, but that gave Sam Houston an opportunity just to take a knee. I said it right before the play. I said, boy, I hope Ryan Humphreys gets they targeted. They call. not only targeted him, they threw it to him. Uh, he finished perfect, 100%, one for one. Ryan Humphreys, the heart and soul of the team, there with that grab, eight yards, and that pretty much uh, said no more for Jacksonville State. Sam Houston was able to take a knee and end this ball game. Six to Total receivers, 18, uh, 235 yards on those 18 receptions. Again, a great game for Sam Houston taking care of business. Brian, your final thoughts before we go tonight? Man, they're the real deal. Uh, I mean, they're the number one uh, team in the country for a reason, and they're clicking on all cylinders, offense, defense, special teams, and they're getting their backups in, getting some valuable playing time. Coach Casey Keeler has just got it going on. I mean, what can you say? And uh, everybody, uh, they got a big uh, target on them. But they're mowing everybody down they get in front of, Rob. I mean, just an all-out team effort today by the Bearcats. The rain, the rain, it stayed away. Yeah, It sure will come did. back another day. It did not interfere with this ball game today. Just a few drops. Sam Houston victorious 42-7 to as they will now go to 6-0 and overall this season. And up next is at Tarleton State a week from today up in Stephenville for Jacksonville State. They will fall to 3-4. and They were not ranked in the FCS stats perform poll. They were ranked in the AFCA at number 21. That will probably be washed down now uh, but again a tough team Jacksonville State this Sam Houston team is for real folks continue to watch them come out in person in Huntsville to support them and if they're on the road and you can make the trip get out there on the road as well we're starting to see a lot more orange when we're oh, out on man. the road I, I get it you're right and, and we're seeing a lot of orange here at home I'm talking 80 90 95 percent capacity and it is an electric atmosphere the tailgating is ridiculous man I mean there are so many people out here I love it the support for this team is incredible just so much fun well, this broadcast has been authorized under rights granted by Sam Houston to Van Wagner. The accounts and descriptions of this broadcast may not be retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Van Wagner and Sam Houston Athletics. 
The executive producers of Sam Houston Football is Zach Kaditz. The coordinating producer is Desiree Chambers. A special thanks to the Sam Houston Athletic Communications Office, Jason Barfield and Ben Reichard. Studio operations by KSAM. Tune in for next week's broadcast of Sam Houston Football on this station as we head to Stephenville to face Tarleton State on the road. For Brian Adams, analyst Nathan Hyde, our on-site engineer, and Steve Ricks, the KSAM Director of Operations, I'm Rob Hip reminding you tonight that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other. Provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand of support. Somebody out there needs you. Good night, friends, and God bless from Huntsville, Texas. Hi, this is Will Smith, and I'm proud of our family business, but I'm also proud to have been a member of the 2001 to 2004 Sam Houston Bearcat football teams. Being a team member is like being part of a family. We celebrate wins, hard work, and doing our best. At Sam Houston Memorial Funeral Home, we understand life is about celebration, and we are the hometown experts in celebrating life. Eat them up, cats! Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, State Farm. Diana K. Barnes is your State Farm agent in Walker County for service you deserve at the price you want. Diana K. Barnes has you covered. Call 936-295-2686 for surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. Sam Houston State University Bearcat football has been a 101.7 KSAM sports presentation. From Rob Hip, Brian Adams,